Happy birthday to you. Oh, Happy God. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. Marilyn Monroe, Happy really? Happy birthday, dear Mr. Flat Earth President. Wow. That is heck Happy of a dress. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I got through am, it without laughing. Yes. I am actually flushed. <laughs> oh. Whew. You nice. get flushed. Your best, your best impression of Marilyn Monroe slash which, Ginger Grant. Nah. Yeah, which is pretty impossible because I, I know Marilyn, but you're no Mr. President. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what's that line uh, back in the day? It's like, I know John F. Kennedy and you're no John F. Kennedy. <laughs> exactly. I wonder if Eric Dubé will hear back from this and think that um, I've crowned you Flat Earth President because isn't he self-crowned Flat Earth President? Uh, well, President of his society. But remember, the Denver Post did that whole King of Flat Earth thing. Oh, yes. Well, which is I am not implying Mark is the president or king of anything, nor am I implying I am Marilyn Monroe in any way, nor that I can sing. So with that out of the way, you happy know, birthday, you, Mark Sargent, 50th you, birthday. You are, Okay, thank you. First off, thank you very much. And second, you are a far better singer than me. And three, actually the whole ensemble really overpowers the singing anyway, although the trolls are going to be merciful. Yeah, I think I'm going to put a blazer on over this because it just, if anybody tunes in now and doesn't realize what happened at the start, they'll be like, why is she wearing an evening gown and really long dangly earrings? But first, shall we have our birthday toast to your 50th? Sure. And, right. and by all means, take as much time. I mean, this is me being completely a pig. <laughs> take as much time as you want as well, far as. I do want to show this first before we start our actual show show. This is called Hot Potato Vodka. And guess who sent this to me? Can I take a guess? Yeah, take a guess. Uh, Chris Pontius from Dallas, Texas. Hey, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he sent this to me. He found it. And it's been in my freezer, therefore the frosty goodness. And I'm going to mix this with gin. I don't know what I should mix it in, but I'm going to going to make a little quick martini here for our toast. It's never been opened. Hasn't been sampled. I'm sure it's spicy. And um, thank you, Chris Pontius, for thinking of me and sending me this. What are you having for your birthday oh, toast? I, I am having a, a normal, a traditional style. It looks just like Coke in a glass. Uh, but this is actually a junior mint, which is one part peppermint schnapps and one part Kahlua. All right, you hold the fort. I can't even open this for some strange reason. So you keep talking and I'll right. be right back with a blazer right. on over this. Really? Uh, all right. <laughs> anyway, that was Ginger Grant, also known as Tina Louise, who, uh, other than playing ginger grant in the television show gilgan's island i don't know but she was a redhead as well and i was one of those idiots who didn't get that you know being a kid it's like you're just looking at her going wow she talks really great and i didn't get why they called her ginger because remember in the states redheads are called redheads and in britain they're called gingers get it redhead ginger so yeah i didn't get i honestly didn't get that till very very recently yeah flat earth that's easy solving little double meaning of a Hollywood starlet's name. Yeah, not so easy. So what should we talk about? Well, Patricia's doing her thing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh -oh. I'm going to... Ready. Are you sure? Yeah, uh, oh, I just got to open that. While Patricia is almost ready, let me first thank everybody who went to the Muckle Teo meetup just north of Seattle, Washington this past weekend. It's really great. D Marble was there and a whole bunch of people. We were down at Ivers Landing Restaurant in Muckle Teo on the water. And then we went up to, I believe it was Muckle Teo Lodge, which was a casual bar. And we had the whole couch and cushy chair area all to ourselves which was great we did a fun raffle and i even gave away believe it or not because it was a washington event i gave away my old banner my old it's flat license plate banner as that was part of the the big thing and, and a set of coins was given away and i gave away one of my hats one of my Whidbey island hats it was a lot of fun so sounds cool i heard part of that when i was getting i had to get something um 
rubbery to open the bottle. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes uh, something is too wet and cold and you can't get a grip. Oh, please. You're, you're talking. You've seen my hands. My hands are, I think, as soft as yours. And yeah, your hands aren't very calloused. Yeah, they're, they're very, very soft. And so I, when I have to open up something small and tight like that, I have to get one of those rubber gripper things as That's well. That's exactly what I just went. I didn't think I'd have to. But anyway, I'm using um, St. George Artisan Distilled Botanivore Gin. All right. So I would use jiggers to measure this out in the uh, normal way if I were doing this in a normal way. But I'm just like throwing it in this thing. Patricia so. is attempting to make a martini. Hot potato vodka gin martini. Yeah, which... habanero infused. Habanero infused vodka is tricky. Yeah, I, I didn't know what to mix with it. There's but... only so many things you can mix with it. Tomato and... juice would have been good. Tomato juice would have been excellent. But and I don't it, have any. Then it would have been a kind of a spicy Bloody Mary, kind of. Unless right. you, but I don't know if you put like horseradish and Worcestershire in it. Yeah, that would have been good. I'm not even, and people are going to think I'm a big drinker since we've had toasts on many shows lately, but I'm not. But, you know. Why don't you quit drinking, well, Your birthday Dad. was yesterday, the 24th, uh, turning yes, Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, I turned 50 yesterday and super thrilled about it. As you probably heard in the show last night. Yes, I did. You were on TFR yesterday, uh, Truth Frequency Radio, doing your normal Strange World show. And yeah, I do have a cocktail napkin of the day. Um, It's kind of wrinkled now. But it says, you look like I need a drink. Really? (laughs) Okay. You you could probably, yeah, you could do that just about anybody. With the exception of some sort of male model, which tend to skew gay. Um, Uh, There's not a lot of guys. Or D-Marble. Or D Marble or D Marble, right? He's a good Flat Earth man. model. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Again, anyway, I, I'm going to keep pushing him towards the camera if I can. Here's to you. Thank you for everything you've done for all of us. Thank you for taking all the hits from the haters as well and always remaining positive and never rolling in the dirt with them. Here's to being a good man and a good role model and a great friend to Mark Aww. Sargent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's a wonderful segue into the hits that are going to keep on coming. Oh, my God. It's almost undrinkable, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) My (laughs) mouth is a habanero now. I was going to warn you that habanero infused vodka tends to lean strong. Yeah, it is. I'm now putting my blazer on and taking the long earrings off from the uh, faux Marilyn Monroe ginger costume to look like a honestly i don't know i mean yeah it's kind of a Marilyn Monroe costume but i i see it more of a tina louise costume yeah it was Tina. well with red hair you red hair it's gonna be tina louise yeah again if you don't know who tina louise is ginger gilligan's ginger, island gilligan's island all right now she was a better Marilyn actually in some some episodes than Marilyn was because she was she was playing over the top Marilyn. yes she certainly and did she, okay now look Total TV news reporter. Yeah, kind of. that is. If she was coming <laughs> off of some sort of runway. Yeah, and, and um, it's a navy blue blazer. So there you mm. go. We're, we're all good. I wow, this is it. really spicy. Well, that what means you won't good? drink it as fast, though. <clears throat> yeah, This will be a one drink show for sure. A one and done. Yeah, one and done. Or maybe mm. one sip and done. That is my mouth is on fire right now. All right. Well, I will cover for you while you recover. Yes. Did okay. what did you talk about while I was gone? I kind of briefly heard Oh, the Muckle Tia meetup. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I watch videos on with uh, David of all fe- all people, free people. <laughs> you can tell I'm like bleh, 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 because my tongue is totally numb now. Yeah. And uh, of course, D Marble as well yeah. did live streams. Fun, fun group. I'd seen several of them before, and, and again, time flies. That was literally my fourth event with D Marble, and my. F- fourth seattle meetup as well you know the first one was two years ago to the day you know back in in april of 2016 yeah. and Earth then day. You, flat and earth then day flat earth day and then you and i did one sorry my candle is flickering i'm doing you have a candle lit you do Here, oh wow you should blow it out and make a wish that's uh, that's what you should do i'll blow it out at the end of the show How's with that? a wish yeah with a wish a flat earth wish well i'm not going to tell you what the wish is but you're going to tell all of us wink what uh no okay i will i'll I'll make a i'll make a cool wish then 
All right. Well, as opposed to the secret wish that you're not going to tell us what it is. Exactly. Well, most does, of my wishes come true, believe it or does not. Does it involve my untimely death or yours? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not that you're oh, saying. <laughs> Trisha, you are funny. Why? What have you heard? The um. Uh, no, no, no. What, what oh, by the way, hello oh. to the live chat. I've ignored you. I didn't mean to. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the opening to the show and keeps in mind that it was purely for kitsch value. And they are going to cut the trolls are going to cut that, splice that, I'm sure, <laughs> and make all sorts of fun stuff with it. Yeah. But it's okay because remember what, what you said I, I thought was very appropriate, which was I take the hits most of the time. It's what I was oh, yeah. designed for, it's what I do. I, I think that I as well have learned well early on, I just ignored all of it the hits, let's say, which by what I mean is the trolling from within Flood Earth and from without. And yeah. seeing you doing it, that's just the, what I decided to do. I very, very, only a very few times have I actually reacted to anything, and I've always regretted it. Best to ignore. Yeah, yeah. again, because they're trolls. And you and, I, you and I have had long conversations about this off air, which is trolls, and, and this is for anybody out there as well, which is trolls are anonymous. That's their well. I mean, there's. I, I'm also speaking of people who we we do know who they are. Oh, I know, I know. But but the majority of trolls, which are in the comments, this is why they stay in the comments, which is because they can remain nameless. Yes. Rarely, so rarely, do I actually get an email from a troll where they're actually emailing me straight to this machine here, or even rarer are the phone calls. And even when those happen, nine out of ten times they're drunk, or on or on glass. Yeah, on, yeah, on glass. <laughs> Which is weird. We just will talk about that on every show. Man. <laughs> so weird. Because who doesn't want to get stabbed with a 24 centimeter knife? I mean, you know. Yeah. But we're in America and people like, what does that work out to? It's nine inches. Just to let you know. At least mm, I, think okay. the, I think the person who wrote that was bragging that nine inches thing. That's full yeah. bragging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me go into the live chat and just sure. say hello to a few people. Earth Pun says, if I get too drunk, I'll end up wanting to destroy the elites in a quite uh, quite a tragic way. You know what? We're all with you on that one. Flat Earth Photographer, who called into your show last night, and I want to get a hold of you, Flat Earth Photographer. I want to talk to you. Um, if you have time and you're still listening, because I'm reading way up earlier in the chat, please message me at Miss Steer, M I S S S T E E R E, at gmail.com. Anyway, Flat Earth Photographer says, Happy 50th. Cheers. Chris Topher says, To Mark. And uh, Karen B. Uh, and David Weiss are saying that what we did was so gay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, it dates us. You know, we should probably make that reference. True. Which is, we, people, a lot of people, if you're younger, you don't even know what we're, what You know happened. what? No one might have even known what we did. Why is she singing in the weird voice? Okay. And why? Well, you explain it, it. Back in the day when John F. Kennedy was president for three years, he was known to have affairs, even though he had a wonderful, stellar wife, Jackie, you know, Jackie Kennedy. Uh, he was known to have affairs with starlets. And one of them, the most infamous was Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. And she wanted to kind of flex her feminine muscle. And so she, they flew her in for his birthday party, which was his down, 45th, actually uh, down in, uh, I want to say Houston. Or was it Dallas? I, I, it was, I'm not quite sure, but I, I do know that it was a year before I was born, 1962. And it was in May, actually, believe it or it not. Was, so. It was definitely in Texas, and it was definitely one of those, like they like they rented out a Coliseum, you know, and just covered the whole thing with ground floor with tables. And she comes on stage and does the most breathy, you know, happy birthday to you. Yeah, draws, much more breathy than I could do it. because Draws it out with a band in the background and a really yes. sparkly dress. And a big and, intro as well. And she had a faux fur on it first and was... Very, you know, if yes, any Marilyn. actress put that on today, it would never fly. But she was accepted as just being that woman. And that's yes. just who she and, was. And you can look this up on YouTube. There are many copies of this thing on YouTube. And it's been parodied many times. Hell, I had an ex-girlfriend sing it in that fashion to one of my mom's friends. Not to you? <laughs> well, that would have made me mad. <laughs> well, well, well I just, just, it's like they were, we was a, it was a group of us, right? And I think, in fact, I'm pretty sure he was a pastor. And okay, now was, that's taken a whole crazy turn right there. Well, I mean, there was a lot of people, so she thought, you know, she would be kind of drowned out, but, every, you know, everybody else sings Happy Birthday pretty bland, and so she was kicking it in. It's like, oh, man. So, yeah, it was a little kinky. So, 
anyway, the, the point was is that Maryland did this and people on the know, in the know, the, the inside yes. track, they knew what was going on. Yeah, there. they knew. She was that basically saying, oh, yeah. I've yeah. had that. I've tapped I, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, she did wear a very glittery dress, which is what I put on. And uh, it, I tried to come up with something as similar as possible from my wardrobe of many things that would be similar. And big, long earrings. And, of course, just everything about her that I don't have, the the body and face and hair. Um, oh, she, she, she um, and, you know, when you look at video of that, she was not a big woman, although people do say that she's a big woman. Well, she really wasn't. okay. Maybe later in time she became bigger. No, no I not even. she died pretty soon after that. A few years after that. But, and, and we won't go, we won't get into, you know, the weird circumstances of her death uh, where she committed suicide by drug overdose. But she was a size 12. She yeah, but size a, twelve then and size twelve mm, now are mm, totally different things. She was she was voluptuous. Everyone knew it. She was she had the hourglass, the traditional hourglass figure. It might be a size twelve then could be a size six in today's women's fashion. Yeah, I don't know if I go six, and I'm I'm saying that totally straight. Because <laughs> normally of guys, you know, it's like, wait, how does he know men's you know women's sizes? Well, you know what size you wear. <laughs> Could be a 14, 16. I don't know. What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> don't tell anyone that. But I work out. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it, no, and the, you know, I mean, you know, we've seen, no, look, look, she did a, a nude spread for Playboy. She was literally the inaugural nude spread mm -hmm. for Playboy back in the late 50s. I want to say 58, 59, but I'm not sure. And uh, not, look, she wasn't a freaking rail. You know, she wasn't, no, she, she was wasn't a beautiful, a, all natural woman. Very woman. beautiful. Are you kidding? No, she was the most, still is one of the top. Uh, and the people who love to do uh, transvestigation say she was a man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. She was, I mean, she was okay. one of the most sought after women in history. I mean, and, and, and most of it was an act, which was made, you know, that persona was sort of oh, like, yes. uh, oh, who was the lady? Oh, come see me sometime. A little bit May West. Yes. A little bit May, May West. Whereas May, you know, it's she, she knew the hook. And you could hear her in off-camera interviews was mostly audio where she was discussing contracts and stuff like that. It was very... She married playwright Arthur Williams. Is it Arthur Williams? Arthur, Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller, excuse me. Arthur yes, Miller? Arthur Sorry. Miller. And um, she was very... She was becoming a very, very good actress yeah. around the time of her death and was also really intelligent. Intelligent enough to play dumb. That's yeah. what her thing was. No, I, good. The, there's an old, old Hollywood saying. It's actually, it's a theater saying, which is give the people what they want. Yeah, that's what and, was big at that time frame. And that's what she did. Maybe yeah. she's the one who made it big. Who knows? But yeah. she um, was definitely an interesting and beautiful person. I've never been a huge Marilyn Monroe fan. I've more gravitated toward, ooh, gravity, gravitated. I use that word. Ooh. I've mm. uh, leaned more toward uh, other actresses around that time, like Audrey Hepburn. I liked Elizabeth Taylor and in the early days. Um, I like a lot of different actresses from those times, but I don't like any actresses of today at all. Nope. Nope. Me neither. Again, tapped out 1999. It's all been. I mean, I'm talking like I like Cary Grant and I know, I know about Cary Grant, but you know, I like Cary Grant. I like Cary Audrey Grant. Hepburn. And again, if you guys want to have some fun, look up Cary Grant and Randolph Scott. Right. But he was a beautiful man and very much the gentleman. Yeah. So men like that don't exist today because society is totally different. It is. It is. Anyway, so, let's move on with the show. Let's talk flat earth. Let's Since say, I'm yeah. in my very professional blazer showing cleavage weight, that is not my style. Here we go. Tilt my <laughs> camera up. <laughs> nice. Uh, so let's segue somewhat awkwardly into uh, our plans this weekend, which we're making public yet again. Mm. Which we are going to be spending some time together in Toronto, Canada. I am going to be leaving on Saturday night. You're going to be leaving on Sunday morning. Uh, not because it takes me an extra long time to get there, but because I don't want to miss my flight. Yeah, with the I'm ferries going. coming out of where you are. I can't. Yeah, there's yeah. the earliest ferries at 5 a.m. and the flight leaves at 7:45. There's no, and it's just. I'm sorry, it's too important because of the buzz being generated recently. Because as you know, between in fact, so much has happened between our last show and now. Whereas before, it's like, oh, they're going to talk about Toronto again. Yes, we are, because now it's already starting to get high. In fact, you don't even know this happened just before I I called you. Which oh was, wow, uh, the tell first me, review, tell the me. first review is already in. 
Oh my gosh. Well, what I heard last before we spoke, which was earlier this afternoon, was there was an article that came out and uh, it's from Screen Day, which is an industry magazine that deals with uh, documentaries and film festivals and stuff. And right. the title is The Film Sales Company Boards, which means gets behind, yeah. behind the get curve for hot train, dogs. Get them more to ship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it says the film takes an unprecedented look at flat earthers who believe there is a centuries long conspiracy to suppress the truth that the earth is flat. Daniel Clark, who, as we know, is the director, and perhaps if you watch the show, you've met him. Daniel Clark has revealed that unlike some conspiracy theorists, theorists who may seem like oddballs who spend their time in dark rooms with tinfoil hats, the community of flat earthers are a heterogeneous, articulate, passionate, and good-humored community of people who are a delight to meet and raise interesting, broader questions of how in today's world we each tend to listen to those who agree with us and discount opposing views. So right there, that tells us, although you and I have not seen this thing yet, oh. that it's not a hit piece, which we, you know, there's always that worry. But no, mm -mm. they're looking at flat earthers as a group as exactly what we are. Exactly. Exactly. And that's a great sign. It's basically a, if you want to, you're trying to figure out, decipher what she just said there. It's kind of like a realtor coming on board to help you sell a house. They're going to take a cut. No question, but you're also going to get their muscle behind it. So they're going to call everybody they know in every studio they know, and they're going to push this thing and say, look, we, we think we got, there's something here. It's, it's entertaining. It's informative and it's brand new in the world of mainstream media. Because remember, we have yet to, been, this is the first documentary, you know, unless you count the Brazilian one, which I really, really don't. And, you know, there's never been a television show on it. There's no there's no licensed marketed products out there that's tied to this. So that's what these guys are behind. And because it's part of a film festival, remember that there's people that have already seen this thing. There were 3000 films submitted to the festival. Only 110 were chosen. And out of those, we're already in the top 10 because let's face it, Flat Earth is just. We should be number one, but I don't think that's going to happen. We're damn magnetic. <laughs> Hey, I do want to add that the word in there, heterogeneous, that's means, a weird word for sure. But it diverse. Kinda, Nobody yeah. uses it. Yeah. Uh, no, but whatever. But, you know, yeah. diverse in content and character, which it we are. We, we are a we, diverse crowd. Exactly. It means we hate gay people. It, I don't, when you look at it the first time, you're going, what in the world? Or does it mean they hate hetero people? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I, why in the way? Yeah. I've never used heterogeneous. <laughs> no. Just heterogeneous. means we're a mixed, a mixed group. We are a mixed group. Yeah. Just say diverse. Don't yeah, I? I, you know, I get it. Put that Fine. big word in there, and you, you, you I know you, you, you major in English, and you got to spend it somehow. <laughs> so you throw those in there, which is why. Remember, remember, you and I, I, I will only use words that I hear on mainstream media. I, I, I know it's very valuable to have an excellent vocabulary, but to me, that means knowing what words means. It doesn't mean putting words in things just to sound smart or saying them just to sound smart. Cause I just see, I can kind of see through that and it's not a good look. So other than the film people, they have also released it to local media like mm -hmm. Toronto. So only the Canadian media have gotten a hold of this thing and a Toronto periodical called called now Toronto, Toronto Times. Oh, okay. now to, now Toronto oh, okay. has, has already reviewed this and I'm going to review it it's a short review and I want to preface this I want to frame this for you in that this is exactly wait should time. is it should I start drinking because is this bad news no 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 it's not bad news at all because remember we don't you got to people that are in the community I'm I'm talk i'm framing this for the community more than the people that are outside the community which is something that i've said for a while which is it doesn't matter if you love it or hate it and by that i mean the the whole flat earth concept as long as you have an opinion on it mm -hmm. you don't want anyone sitting on the fence going yeah i don't care and just walk you know, just keep walking you want them to be polarized and that's we, we are going to see the same thing that we've seen in the comment section we're going to say see the same thing that we were witnessing with the big channels like PewDiePie and BuzzFeed and all these guys, we are going to see this is this is just a classic example of what you see because they're going to have to choose a side mm -hmm. depending on the writer. They are going to go either for flat earth or against what we don't want and what I don't think it'll happen because I think Daniel's talented, by the way, Daniel J. Clark, the, the director, uh, also a good kisser. The um, it, either come for or <laughs> against <someone>. it. <laughs> I know he's probably listening right now going, oh, God, please don't. I'm not gay. And he's not. He's he's a wonderful man. And he looks like Ethan Hawke's brother. Which right. Is and you're not gay either. So 
No, no. Is that rumored to rest right now? No, 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 no. Never been, never been gay. No, but willing to learn. <laughs> All right. You so, keep going. Uh, one of my cats, Greer, if you heard, was meowing. She need, needs okay, something, so but I'm I can gonna, hear you. I'm going to read you this review really quick. You guys can look it up yourself. It's on nowtoronto.com. It's called, the movie is called Behind the Curve. And the title of the article is called Hot Docs Review Behind the Curve. And the title or the the thing right underneath it is Daniel J. Clark's documentary is remarkably is a remarkably clear eyed look at the flat earth movement and is written by Norman Wilner and it was written just a couple hours ago. Here we go. Unlike a few other films about people who hold questionable beliefs, Behind the Curve is a remarkably clear-eyed look at the Flat Earth Movement in which people around the globe, eh, see what they did there, but mostly in America, labor to convince the rest of us that our planet is flat. More like a terrarium, really, but sinister forces have gone to elaborate, oh, I'm sorry, elaborate lengths to keep it quiet. It's a literal conspiracy theory and one spun out over and over again by the likes of Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer, who've become superstars in the Flat Earth YouTube community over the last few years. They don't offer real answers, just innuendo and suspicion. Steer loves referring to the powers that should not be, but that's what keeps people coming back, of course. Documentarian Jan Daniel J. Clark interviews them and a few other believers and lets them tell their version of reality. But he also speaks to astrophysicists and psychologists who efficiently debunk their beliefs and explain how people might have come to hold them. The Dunning-Kruger effect, in which people convince themselves they know everything about something while actually knowing very little, is brought up fairly early on, along with confirmation bias, which keeps people focused on evidence that supports their existing beliefs rather than evidence that challenges them. While there's entertainment value in watching the clown show of fringe weirdos drawn to the movement, one especially enthusiastic dolt swerves from terrarium theory to angst to anti-vaxxer and young earth talking points in a matter of seconds. Clark also offers a compassionate view, hoping that the brighter ones might be talked back to an acceptance of reality. I want to believe he's right. That's the whole review. Patricia, who is not there, who is uh, so anyway, I will I will comment on this. I, I missed the whole thing you were saying because I, one of my I'm having a cat issue, which uh, I'll have to leave in a second. Uh, you have to leave again? Yes, because it's something about Greer. She's stuck in a closet and won't come out. So I can't leave why her in you, there. Why don't you just leave the closet door open? She won't come out. She's like up in a place where I have to grab her out of. She's sort of stuck. I heard this weird me 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 noise. So um, uh, the brief me. update on what you... <laughs> Can you tell me all that over again and bore oh, everybody in the Lord. audience? I can't. You, know, I'm not. I can't. I'm not going to read it again for the crowd. You guys have already heard it. Is but it good I, or bad? It's it's good. Basically, he likes the film, but he's a science backer, and he's going to. And of course, we're going to get that. Oh, we're going to get a lot of that. And does he call us some morons or tells us? No, no, not at all. Die? He's he's just is he's they again a lot of reviewers depending on their background, and this guy's got a, probably a master's in English. He is going to, you know, he's going to back off of it and, and be like a lot of people where he's going to be like, OK, so, you know, because they did talk to astrophysicists and psychologists during this, which I knew they would. Mm -hmm. Although it wasn't Neil deGrasse Tyson. Psychologists. Like, well, some of these people just need to feel special. So that's why they believe in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're we gonna... want our reputations drug through the mud. We want to get threats. We wanna, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah love, loving it. Loving that. Most, most flat earthers <laughs> are masochists, I think, deep at heart. It's like, yeah, you know, I get it. get somebody get a writing crop and smart smack in my back. Well, you can you talk you can, about your own personal life off my show, buddy. <laughs> All right. All go right. Go ahead. Go ahead and take care of the I'm going to go get Greer out of the little part of the different, closet. She's different done. brands of writing crops. Go ahead. No, I'll be back in a second. So Patricia prefers the writing crop that's not made out of actual leather, but a plastic. No, I'm kidding. All right. So here's why I like this review. And this is what, again, this is a perfect, if this is the per first one that came out, then it is absolutely what we are going to see in the future, which is we all we really care about doesn't matter if they love it or they hate it as long as they have an opinion on it in this case he thought the film was well made he you know he watched the film does he agree with us of course not uh does he have an opinion on it? yes he's gonna side that he want them to pick a side 
he is going to pick the side of science and a lot of other people are going to put uh, pick the side of science but why it's important and in fact i had a discussion to, uh, with a friend recently about this uh, who i sent this review to as soon as i got it why it's important is because this now gives mainstream media a an excuse to cover flat earth without having to is everything okay now yeah i got her she's still fine all right there's a part of my closet uh that's high really high up and it's she got one of her back foot feet stuck in a little hole thing so got it so so and i don't heard, know how by the way <laughs> just you heard don't. anything what i was saying there so we you have to start the whole show over and i missed most of it oh, I, no 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 i i can i can summarize for you mm. the uh, this sort of review is what we're going to see because we don't we we want them to choose a side remember it's what that producer told me last year which was it doesn't matter if you love it or hate it as long as you're engaged with right. the topic very true and this also the reason why the documentary is so important is it gives and i know oh i, I gotta mention this to you because uh you missed this part along with the likes of mark Sargent and patricia steer who become superstars in the flat earth youtube community what? yeah i know right yeah, right. It's okay. I'm a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the thing about it is that we, people say, why are you so happy that mainstream media is taking note? We don't care about mainstream media. Yeah, well, I'll agree with that. But there's people who've never heard about Flat Earth before. Here's and this is going to be their entree into looking into it. I don't mean yep. this documentary. I mean, anytime we're able to get... Um, you know, that kind of attention. I, you know, we don't believe in the mainstream. We're not going to do what the mainstream says. We don't want the mainstream to love us or approve of us. That's not it. It's getting more eyeballs on the topic. That's, that's all really. Also, in addition to that, you, you have to remember that this gives up until now, when a writer wants to cover flat earth, they have to approach their editor or producer and come up with, it's like, all right, you have to explain to them what you're going to do. You know, you have to explain that you're coming flat earth. This now, remember I talked about the degree of separation. This creates a buffer. Now, all they have to do is say, hey, I want to review a movie. Mm, true. That's it. Now and they also, can. also, if a writer wanted to look into flat earth before, or if a, uh, a guy who was in charge of writers at a paper or something said, hey, I want somebody among you in the reporter pool to write about flat earth, they'd probably have to draw straws. And the one that got the short straw is the one who would write about flat earth. Ew. But now they would be fighting over the opportunity because right. it's a very interesting, very now, very hot topic. Absolutely. And it, this will only lead to other things because now, now that Flat Earth is a bona fide media compartment, it's it's there. This plug is not like a, putting a, a Lego piece on a board. Now that it's actually established, other people, all, all mainstream, because we have so much media that's tied to entertainment, it's now considered, yeah, it's part of the documentary thing, but it's also part of the entertainment industry in in some way and so it gives access to a lot of groups we didn't have to and it doesn't mean that we are entertainers or that we're looking to make flat earth into entertainment but maybe sometimes infotainment when people are laughing well, yeah. when people are happy it can open their minds like like a comedy routine where they talk a lot about a lot of political issues right um like some of the very very famous comedians who told a lot of truth like george carlin for example right. um you know, if people are engaged and interested in a topic because they're listening to or watching people that they either like or hate, <laughs> doesn't really matter, they're right. at least feeling something. And yeah. it's not, you know, bland. Um, the thing about Flat Earth, it's got, it's got a lot of math and science in it, but then there's the other side that doesn't. It's all about the way we can see things with our own eyes and how we can use our BS detectors that we're born with to see what's right and what's wrong and reevaluate yeah. what we've been taught. And it's okay for flat earth to have a little level of a soft aspect or a little right. level of entertainment because it's got that really very important hardcore level of uh, busting the lies of science too. Flat earth has got everything in it. That's what makes it so compelling. 
yeah. every it's the it's a human story the human element we all here that are studying this researching this um exploring it together we're all people with totally different backgrounds heterogeneous or genius as the uh, as the big word said a little while back in the show right. um we we come from different places and we have different perspectives how we grew up and uh, where we came from and our and our forefathers etc cetera, etc cetera. that's what makes it so great we're bringing all that with us and right. flat earth can can um splinter off into all sorts of other studies as it has for all of us like looking into chemtrails like looking into fill in the blank you know and it's it's a great thing because it opens your mind to so much the there's i know i know you didn't hear me when i was reading the review and i'll send this to you afterwards we'll probably talk to it talk about it briefly after the show but the, when they said you know because they did again it evoked an emotion in this guy he was like he was taking a breath like well you know the when he said that um the astrophysicists and psychologists who efficiently debunk their beliefs and explain you know how how people might have come to hold them two things there when he says efficiently that means they didn't have much of a role in the movie kind of like uh the it was it's this is just gonna be the expanded version of the abc news thing which i knew mm -hmm. it was going to which is people forget the abc news coverage actually had a guy from nasa in it towards the end but it was a real small set part of him just talking it's like no i can assure you it's round in this case they're going to do the same thing i can well, i can assure you they'll say it's round instead of a sphere or ball or globe but they'll also bring in a psychologist say well you know there's got to be a reason and here's they're why very mistrustful people who don't yeah. have close family and friends and they feel alienated and isolated from the rest of society so they grasp yeah. onto this it's sort of like a cult it gives them a sense of purpose you know that's what they're going to say and it's all yeah. wrong of course and people when if you're looking at this from the outside you've never heard of this before don't forget that this documentary isn't happening because flat earth is just some sort of flash in the pan we're not here because we're losing. <laughs> if we were losing, I wouldn't be talking. I was like, yeah, just pack it in. Let's just go home. You know, case closed, RAP. But no, 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 no. We just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that's why this documentary is coming out. The, the, you don't, documentaries like this don't get made on things that have, the, you know, have nothing to them. It's, it's too big not to cover. Oh, let me mention this also that uh, Daniel... Uh, he left this in there. I thought it was very interesting where he said um, one, especially, and I don't know who this is because again, we haven't seen it. One, especially uh, enthusiastic dolt. Remember if he's making, he's, he's, he's certain, calling flat earthers dolts. Yeah, exactly. If he's doing that right back in, that's the emotion we're looking well, for. Well, that's what we get. Sometimes you, everyone who makes oh, videos please. has yeah. received comments like that in their comment section, name oh, calling, you resort not, to name calling. You've lost the battle not just few name calling uh swerves from terrarium theory to anti-vaxxer and young earth talking points in a matter of seconds and and i thought that's interesting because remember they i know who that is too and she's far from adult do you, do you know who it is yeah i think that's carly sunshine because carly really has a lot of um did valid points about terrarium terrarium earth is kind of her model that she did they has. sit down with carly I probably Maybe? spoke to so many people, you know, know. and well, I'm that, guessing well, that was just it. They slipped that in there. They didn't have to, you know, leave in. I mean, you remember they shot, oh my God, a day's worth of footage. But also literally. Rob Skiba has something kind of terrarium ish in some things he speaks. Yeah, of. but when he go to anti-vax, not that it matters. It, the, the, the point is, is they left it in there. Kind of All like of us little, are anti-vaxxers. I mean, I'm but, but they left it pretty in. broadly, they, but that's they all didn't, of us. They didn't have to keep that in there. So leaving it in there is anti-vaxer. What are yeah. just the, even just the anti vax just the, uh, the, the, it's a demeaning phrase. I wouldn't say we're anti-vaxxers. That's not how we'd say it. We we don't want to inject poison into our children. There's uh, a different way to put it than anti-vaxer. It sounds so, you know. So my my point here is that this is just the first shot of many. Because anyone, any reviewer, unless again, you you'll it'll depend on where, what magazine, what periodical, uh, their opinion. A lot of them are going to try and will toe the line. Because remember, if you're a reviewer, you're not going to be super objective anyway, unless you've you've been there a long time and and you've got tenure and you're never ever going to get canned. Really, you're going to go on even if you liked it. If you thought, hey, flatter is interesting, you're not going to give it some sort of glowing review because you're afraid of your editor. But also. So in this case, maybe when we see that 
people write about us flat earthers and say horrible things about the us in mainstream media, like uh, referring to one of us as adult, mm -hmm. maybe these people who are writing these articles are trying to put the peer pressure on so that nobody will want to speak out and tell the truth about their beliefs because it will be that sort of group think that they'd be mm. too afraid to. Maybe, but in this case, I, I think it's more more primal than that, where it just, you, you, we've seen it so many times where people, the first reaction, remember, the first reaction is always denial followed closely by anger. That, how could anybody call anybody? Adult? Adult. In, who, you read what the kind of a sections? writer? <laughs> I know, comment section in a video from a troll. Okay, fine. Faceless. A writer who has a body of work reviewing something, calling one of the participants in something, even if they don't believe in what they're talking about, how can you be so rude to call somebody else uh, adult? You're absolutely right. And the writer be, should be called on the carpet for uh, the, having, it's okay to be biased, but there's a, there's a below the belt aspect to uh, that. Let's see if there's a comment. There is a comment section, which you guys can go in through Facebook. Oh, good. You can go to, you can just look up the article. All you have to do is type in behind the curve and type in and, and click it on news category. You'll see it. It's at the top of the list and you can scroll down and start commenting if you want. And he will not be the first one that, that makes a mistake in the, those regards. You know, he's like, look, his, his emotion got up exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah. Uh, everything I learned about in school is true. And anybody who thinks otherwise is adult. I can just we, see him, you know, typing it out in his keyboard. We've seen this in my case, three years now where it, you, you can almost set your watch to the responses. Whereas people get really, really worked yeah. up. And in his case, he left the professionalism behind a little bit and he, and he, and he took a shot. It's like, yeah. okay, fine. And he will not be the last. There will right. be others that will. We have to have thick skin because as we make our way into media, it will not be just the idea of flat earth that yeah. will be people will take shots at. They will take shots at every single person in it. That's so just when it. When the reviewers from Time Magazine and Newsweek and Forbes and whatever, whoever else is out there and Washington Post and New York Times, when they take their shots, do not take it personally. Yes, that's right. Do not, do not forget that I would have been there if you would have asked me three years ago, I would have taken a shot too. So that that's how I justify it when I when I see this. It's like, yeah, right. I guess I never would have called somebody else adult, though. That's not my. No, I, would I would never not. have gone low. I would say these people are obviously misled. That would be as far as I would go. It prior to my flat Earth knowledge, I might have said that. So. But even uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Even even nine months after I was into flat Earth, remember the first time I, I remember Jonathan was with me when somebody brought up the whole cold moonlight thing. And I, even though I had been in flat earth for nine months and then all of a sudden brings up, Oh yeah, did, by the way, did you know the moonlight was cold? I'm going, get out of here. <laughs> well, there have been conflicting, uh, tests by flat earthers. Some say yes, some say no. So I don't know if we have a definitive on that. I, I tested it myself. I got one of those little fun things. I know I have it too. Same results for me. However, other people have other results and they're flat earthers. So there you still have it. Mine's, I actually put mine in my tool chest. I don't know why, but I didn't know where else it belonged in my house. The bedroom. Oh, yeah. With those riding crops you mentioned earlier. Yeah. No, yeah. don't have any. Anyway, so if you guys want to check it out, it's, it's a great review and I highly recommend it. And please ignore the picture of me standing on the beach because that's the shot they used. And, but they quoted you. They didn't even quote me. Oh, they did? Yeah, the quote was something about riding crops, I'm sure. The the quote is, uh, Steer loves referring to, love that you're going to be using your last name a lot, referring to the powers that should not be, but that's what keeps people coming back, of course. So so wait, that I, I said Steer, oh, I don't even understand. No, it. you said that the powers that should not be. Yeah, that's, I do say the powers that should things. not be because I cannot point the finger at one group who put us in this predicament. It's been... <laughs> many years of many groups and many individuals and to pin it on one group is going to be leaving out some other guilty party. So that's why I say that. Yeah. It's one of your trademarks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and well, you should probably trademark it. Yeah, I will. I'll work yeah. on that. Yeah, T-shirt. So yeah. Down with the powers. It should not be. <laughs> so we are going to, we, we didn't actually get to our schedule. So we are going to be heading up to Canada uh, both arriving this Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon and then the day after, which would be the 30th. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Indeed. 30th, which Monday is a Monday. 
Monday the 30th in Toronto at Spin Bar and Ping Pong Table Place. We are going to be doing a meetup. Yeah, meetup. And there's food, there's drinks, um, yep. alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and we can play ping pong and chat. And I just think it's, it'll be a cool place, especially For, with the name Spin. Kind of unique. Yeah, it was a good choice. And if anyone wants to go, you can look up all the details. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup Toronto. And there's two things for that up at the moment. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. Oh, 6 and, p.m., by the way. And it's on King. Is it on King Street? I don't remember. Again, that's okay. why I told them. Look okay. Up. Spin like, wait, what, is the name of the we don't, we don't have to think for them. They're smart people. That's true. They're flat earthers after all. Ping pong. You know, no, I'm not going to describe that. You know what it is. So <sighs> the day after we are doing a private screening, we don't know exactly when. Oh, no. With Tuesday. The film team. Okay. Yep. Which Should I bring my uh, vodka in my suitcase just for some? <laughs> Which I, and I've got to remind people if you remember, because we're the the first showing officially is on the same night we're doing the meetup, and many people are going to be going to that at nine p.m. So don't unless there's something horribly horribly wrong, don't give us too many spoilers. You know, don't right. text Patricia and, and start giving all giving away all stuff because we're supposed to see it for the first time with the film team in their hotel room. Yeah, they asked us to see it. Yeah. The day after their opening. I don't know why. Well, why? well it's because they're not going to be in town. Oh, they, they, okay. Meaning, here's here's the plan. Their plan was to show it to us before, the sh you know, before the first showing. However, the you know, because they're going to cut it close. They're not going to get there. They, they don't have time to do it before the first showing on the 30th. See, I'd be okay seeing it without them giving me the preview. I would too, but that's custom airy in the... Hollywood world. I know we're not Hollywood, but that's what you do. You sit down with everybody. Everybody that made the movie that's that's part of the movie. I see. I see. You I sit see. down. You say, "Okay, here's what we shot here," and then Angelina says, "Hey, that's my ass. You can't show that. That's <laughs> not in my contract." And then the lawyer stamps, you know, runs out of the room and calls. Anyway, we're we're just there. To in our case, if there's something that we don't like, how Flato has been portrayed, there's nothing we can do about off. it. Nothing we can do about it. Uh, but there, it's a common courtesy. So, and uh, we signed away any uh, remunerations for this, meaning we didn't get paid to do it. And we, no matter what happens to it, we're not receiving any funding for it. That's not why we did it. No, and there are other flat earthers working. in it, as we've said. So. Exactly. We don't know. I mean, we know all the locations that they were at. We do not know who is in it and who is not in it other than I, Jaron's definitely in it because I saw at least one shot of him in there. Yeah. And I mean, and how, people who went to the uh, the conference in Raleigh, North Carolina. Exactly. If you signed a waiver, there's a chance you're going to be in it. Mm -hmm. Signed a release form. And like Chris Pontius, he spent an afternoon with Chris Pontius. Don't know mm -hmm. if he's in it. Oh, speaking of Chris Pontius, he sent me something and it's going to be hard to show because it's behind me, but I will mm -hmm. do my best. There it is. And it's only flashing white right now, but it says Patricia Steer on it. Oh. He makes all sorts of things like that that can have your name on it or flat earth on it. And I didn't ask him for it. Uh, you know, it was total surprise when he sent me that and the hot potato vodka. So Chris Pontius, you're so, so, so nice, such a nice man and talented. So thank you for doing that. Oh, now it's turning purple. Cool. And I hear he's in the market for a flat earth girlfriend. Is he really? Yes, he is. Well, yep, you know, the is. thing is, is that finding a flat earther as a mate, a life mate, um, not just a date, but something more, that's a goal of many, that's the goal of every one of us who's single. Well, I, if you're into flat earth, you can't, you can't go the other way. I mean, especially, I mean, if they're, if they're neutral, which is weird, you know, how, how can people be that neutral? But if they're against it, yeah, you're doomed. You, if you're you already in a committed, loving marriage and your spouse is not into it, I guess that can be okay. But finding a new partner, you have a, immediately. Call you, up, call you up have a lawyer, wish list. Call up a cheap lawyer and just say, look, man. But just because somebody is a flat earther and you meet them and try to have a relationship, trust me on this one, that doesn't mean that they're not, that they're a good person. No, that does not mean they're a good person. Right. Could mean that they're bad. Could be. Could. And then let's kind of leave that at that. Yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going further. Um, I mean, I'm not um, speaking about myself, of course, and of anything course, I've no, been no. involved uh, with. Heaven kind of just, you know. The uh, so anyway, after we do our private screening, we are then doing a public screening in the afternoon on the Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. a public screen on Wednesday. So it's being shown three times in the TIFF theater. And that day we, we actually go to the theater and we sit there somewhere, maybe hopefully in the back and yeah. watch it on With the big screen. And yeah. And we get to see, 
how the audience reacts to it. If right. they're laughing at things that aren't funny or, right. you know. Or, or horrified or, or do they sit there with bug eyes going, holy smokes. And then I think we, that they'll just be amused, entertained, fascinated, yeah. shocked. Um, some will be angry. And that the, the range of emotions, that's what Flat Earth brings out. And I think that that yeah. equals interest. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, we There is no reason to think that what's going to happen on a bigger stage will diverge from what we've seen so far. Yeah, just the, the, the comments you get if you make videos in your on your videos. That's what we're going to see as this gets bigger and bigger people. in magazines, newspapers, uh, TV, documentaries, or whatever. Right. So I just hope that this gets more people's eyes on Flat Earth. That's the whole reason that this happened it will. for us. It will. And, and it will be picked up by everybody that can because it's the excuse. Now you can you can review it without having to worry about bringing it up as a as a topic because it's already been brought up for you right and Basically. more documentaries will be spawned from this um interviews uh, articles uh it just oh yeah it this is the first and from here it goes kind of i think it, it will start to go viral I, I yeah think. well yeah. more viral than it already go, is and go into a tier that we've never seen before mm -hmm. because right now yeah we've we've had stories and lots of mainstream media has covered us now but we still haven't gotten into primetime television either morning or evening we haven't gotten into any of that and yet the thing is is that i hate television uh, but people and, watch and, it who don't know about flat earth and in order to get them to look at the subject this is the natural progress progression and, and as i've told other people i said you know how i know this is going to work how it's going to go because i don't want it to i do not want to be on television don't want to do it and well we don't know what people will be on television or what people well, will no but i mean i don't want uh, you know me he's like you know monstrous i don't want to do it i don't <laughs> want to be anywhere near a freaking camera and yet i got this horrible fear when i when i go to sleep them some nights like oh god yes ellen I would love to talk about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking quite fetching in your short haircut. I think what's going to happen from this is more people will become interested and more people will look into it, which means everybody who makes flat earth videos is going to have more of a uh, duty, I guess, all of us right. to, to be better and do better, yeah. you know, I, because more it, eyes will be on us. Yeah. So be on and your maybe best it'll behavior. help the fight in fighting cease a little bit. It should. If the now, real goal well, now we will have up to the truth now we then. will have common enemies because we, if it gets to this level which i think it will unfortunately for neil and brian cox and bill nye and michio kaku and those guys they're going to be roped into this because they have to be He's, look we're running a segment uh science has to step up somebody you got to put somebody in here so let me go into the live chat and see what what's going on um, I'm going to go from the bottom. Lucy Lemons is here who says, flat earth, flat earth saved my life and gave it meaning. I'm so grateful for all of you guys, my Flat Earth family. You know, I think a lot of people have similar feelings to that, although many of us have families that we know and friends, but we, we, we have found a purpose. And psychologists who are going to be in this documentary saying that that's the only reason why flat earthers are flat earthers because they're totally mentally you know devoid of any value so they need a family in flat earth because right. their real family won't have them no 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 but you know what lucy is saying is there's a connection of people of like mind and that is a pleasant thing regardless uh and dave hinkle is here too go ahead what we are going to say oh no i was just going to say the the lucy thing reminded me that remember national geographic they're looking to shoot a documentary of their own a little late to the game but they are going to try to come out to a meetup in either palmdale california which is coming up and lucy's mm -hmm. the one that's going to be organizing that and jaron is going to be there or the sacramento meetup where Ooh. michelle gents is going to be organizing that and jaron's going to be there jaron's getting around yes and, um i i think i put him in touch also with aaron kreshock down in hope I, hopefully i pronounced that right yeah that's down it. down in la and so all these guys are getting together because he says, are you going over? I'm going, no, 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 I'm going to be busy. But there's great people in all these locations. So Lucy and Michelle do a good job. 
uh, Five Arts Liberalis is here who made a really good video looking back at a 1970s TV commercial and it shows the programming and mind control that's in this commercial and it's got Spock in it. <laughs> so weird, but look at Five Arts Liberalis, that's A-R-T-E-S or Artis Liberalis channel and check that out. Hello to Zoe, be here in love, who says I look nice and black. It's actually navy blue, but thank you for the compliments. Uh, Nicole Cote, Nicole, hi, thanks for being here. And I was mentioning your video uh, to somebody a little bit earlier. In fact, I think to you, Mark, no, no, no. I was talking with Nora Nowen's flower. Uh, Nicole Cote has this great new video in which she pretty much said something that I can't believe I hadn't heard anybody else say yet, which is when someone comes to your channel and trolls you and says, well, show me a picture of the edge. They're the people, of course, who believe in the globe and infinite space. Though these people are okay with infinite space, with no end, no edge. So why can't they be okay with no end, no edge potentially to flat earth? They, yeah. they, it's, it's ridiculous. And she made a great video, which could help anybody watching it to battle with trolls or at least understand where they're coming from and have a, have a nice reply if you want to. Right. Uh, Andrew Zace is here and Chris Mullen, who says, the world is round. <laughs> Perhaps it is, but uh, not a ball. Uh, Recipes Finem. Hi. Again, me with the bad pronunciation. Respice Finem. There we go. Uh, good times for all is here. Hello, Joey Sylvie and Thank Karen B. Uh, let's see. Andre Brousseau is here. Zane. Um, and Chris Mason, who says it's convex. All right. Uh, Himawari77 is here. And... Uh, other people here and four eyes to see Carrie is here too. Uh, going up on the, and one of my contact, I have one contact and it's not really working. So I'm a little bit not good. Vinny TV is here. David of all people, free people is here. Helio skeptic is here. Jamal Cowper is here. And, uh, 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 glaucoma is here and Irk childs and, uh, Jose JG Gonzalez and, um, Brian G big music channel who says, Patricia, my brother is flat earth and listens while painting houses. You know, listening to podcasts, videos, what have you, while doing something, especially manual labor of any sort, is so great. It, or driving. Oh, it is. It's so it good. Is. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I don't know what I would do without it. it. In fact, I used to do it before flat earth. I would listen to like what would be called books on tape, you know, that sort of thing. Um, at, because of the same reason, your mind is engaged in another world while you're doing something like painting yeah. or cleaning or whatever the case may and be. Again, I recommend to people, do not put my stuff in when you're falling asleep, hot sex. Well, Shouldn't. so many people, including myself, have listened to Flat Earth videos and fallen asleep. Um, awesome. And it gets into Literally. your dreams. And That's... you wake up a Flat Earther, so. Yeah. It also <laughs> gives me access to your dreams. <laughs> and yeah, and you do collect data on dreams, right? Oh, uh, since you are the either, uh, owner of Metatron, <laughs> I can either confirm nor deny those allegations. Um, Zulu One is here, Dr. Michael Miller, PhD, asking why have we lived a lie? Ginger Sugar Bush is here, and hello to everyone who's here. Oh, Candy is here. I don't know if I said hi to Candy, Candy before. Yeah. Candy, I'm, so, I'm not sure I, I don't know lies. who that um, person is. <laughs> Midnight Gardener, too, and everyone hi i hope everyone's okay doing cool having fun enjoying life and you know we're here to enjoy life and spread truth and i think that flat earth has brought that into our lives big time all of us big happenings tomorrow or excuse me not tomorrow but friday the 27th and then the 28th and 29th of april 2018 in central birmingham england it's the first ever flat earth convention uk and if you want more information tickets are still available you can go to flat earth convention uk.co.uk and i will put a link to it in the description box of this video so you'll be able to hear about who the presenters are uh, what the program is, and uh, you know Gary John is involved in it big time, um, and putting the thing together. But the he also speaks at it. But also there's a, a whole host of people like Dave Marsh and Darren Nesbitt and uh, Ira Landucci and Martin Kenny, Sean Connors, Mike Cavanaugh, and last but certainly not least Martin Leakey, and uh, Dave Murphy. I was on Facebook the other day and he had to go to the hospital because he inhaled a substance 
from his vehicle and it made him ill. So hopefully he's going to be fine. I haven't checked my Facebook today. He's going to be fine for, um, for was the that event. substance in a paper bag in the front no, seat? No, no, it was a had, gas, a gas, yeah. some gas. I can't even remember what it was, but uh, it was an that accidental gas? sort of incident that occurred. A gas called glue. No, no, no. So uh, paint. No, no, no. He wasn't huffing anything. Yeah. And I'm not sure the whole story. That's the what I had heard people saying on Facebook that he's okay, that he had to go to the hospital. He was feeling like oh, I think one side of his body was sort of paralyzed and it was the weirdest thing. Like, and then he went to the hospital and they, they took care of whatever the issue was. And I'm sure Dave, hugs, not drugs. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, anyway, so check it out. Flat Earth Convention UK. It's uh, coming up Friday, Saturday and Sunday, central Birmingham, England, and you still can get tickets. So this do just do. in. Do, 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 do. Okay, you ready for Teletype. this? Teletype. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can hear that the machine in the background. And people are also th thinking, what's a teletype? What's a teletype? Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm old. Jesus Christ. All right. So The news used to come on this giant machine that made all of this racket. Keys would type, and it would come from ABC or yeah. NBC or CBS, the top stories. Oh, the Associated Press. Yeah. Or oh, the AP. Yes, the AP Newswire. And then people in, in the uh, radio biz, like I used to be back in those days, and it would be in a small soundproof room, and it was a big, heavy metal machine that would be up to your about waist high look like a big typewriter but all enclosed and you had to remember if you were the dj or you know whatever to go change that paper because if you didn't change that paper when a hot news story would come in the bell would ring really loud loud enough so you could hear it through the soundproof room and it would be ding 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 but if you forgot to put paper in the story would just print on the roller and you'd have no story and you'd probably get fired because the wow. biggest story of the world would be there and you wouldn't know about it um but anyway, yeah, that is what a teletype machine was back in the day. So do you remember the interview that I did? I got to mention this it, it's because this this goes along with the whole why it's so important that every if, if anyone can cover Flat Earth, I don't care what article, I don't care what rag covers it as long as they freaking cover it. Do you remember my interview I did with Ross and Carrie? Do you remember that little is like a little out of L.A. A little was comedy it a year ago? Yeah, maybe a year ago. Like uh, they were like a comedy duo. It was like, oh no, Ross and Carrie. That was the name of their show. Yeah, no, don't. Yeah, anyway, so they they kind of debated me during the show. They were definitely skeptics, right? And I put that in their head, and it's been rattling around in there ever since. Remember, like marble in a paint can, you're never getting rid of it. You're just chewing it. You know, it's rattling, rattling, rattling. And eventually, they got a hold of me two days ago. And they said, hey, my friend Carrie and I, like I had to be reminded, interviewed you a while back on our podcast, Ono, Ross and Carrie. Part, he's also part of a skeptics organization called the Independent Investigators Group. We regularly investigate claims, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to do a freaking flat earth balloon test with things. The basic idea, we stake points on opposite shores across a seven mile stretch of the Sultan Sea outside of Los Angeles, which is a self-contained body with water. I never even knew there was a body of water out there. And we're going to use both a boat traveling and Mylar balloons, blah, blah, blah. We plan to film this from various vantage points. We'd love to have some Flat Earth proponents participate in Wait, the experiment. Would Mylar balloon? I mean, the, if there, a balloon test has to be done with a weather balloon, something very well, tough no, and durable can, you, that can you, stand up. You, no, well, no, we're not talking clown Mylar balloons. We're Did talking like happy birthday mark on them. <laughs> love you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> Uh, or condolences. The uh, no, I don't no, no. Think people give condolence balloons. It's just the two things don't go together, do they? Do they? No, I don't. There think. Are there condolence balloons? I'm sorry, somebody you love. There's died. no balloons with a, a balloon. headstone, headstone on it, and like a grim reaper and with a sad face on him. Anyway, <laughs> IP. So, uh, okay, not condolences. So anyway, he goes. Would like to have some flatters proponents participate to help run the experiment and keep everything on the level. <laughs> See what you did there. Would you potentially be interested in helping out? If so, I can provide more detailed information. Best Ross. And so I put him in touch with Aaron Kreshock and National Geographic, and I carboned everybody and. Aaron just wrote me and he goes, hey, I'd be happy to participate in your experiment. I do have a number of bright flat earthers that would probably be interested in coming along. I also have some producers that might be interested in documenting the experiment from their own perspective. Perfection. I know. It's all coming together. Well, so that's what this is all about. Everyone has an area of specialty. Everyone can connect others and then just doing it. That's yeah. how we get this done. That's how we get more eyes yeah. on flat earth. There are people who listen to that show uh what's their name in carrie oh mm. yeah 
Ross and Carrie. Ross yeah, and yeah. Carrie in LA and their fans and they listen, you know, like every day, every weekday or whatever, whenever the show is on and they don't know much about Flat Earth. They might have heard you on there once, but after that, they might hear it as a butt of a joke, but they will, if they follow this proposed oh. event, learn about Flat Earth and then start doing, some will laugh and some will do their own research. And that's because it got out to mainstream press. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. A lot of people that I've run into and you got, you can't tell when I'm doing the interviews with people, but a lot of the interviews I do, they're half kind of trying to talk me out of it. Like, like, it's like, you don't really believe in, you know, like they were doing a Kyrie for a while. Oh, it's I know like, you don't really like, well, what about this? What about this kind of hoping that like, I'll, I'll have this revelation, like, Oh man, I just oh yeah, I've just wasted three years of my life. Three years of my life, <laughs> uh, but but no, because I, I don't, wrote a book and everything, but it was all for naught. It's, it's the exact opposite, you know. Once I get rolling, blah, 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 you know, there's they're like, holy crap! Not only did he not, he just actually got faster and faster as we were yes. doing this, it's to where the, it it affects them. They're like, okay, whatever's happening here, they t some take it as a challenge. We got to be able to shut this thing down, right? Right, guys, call up a few people. Right, we can shut this down, and so that's what they're doing. They're going out to try to try to disprove flat Earth, and hey, best of luck to you. But it's because of that interview that was a while back that stuck well, in their head. We all know that doing balloon tests is not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. People who yeah. are very qualified to do balloon tests have had failures. Yeah, they it's about the environment and you know it, things that we can't control, and having the right amount of helium and the. Uh, you know, it's a either, whole lot of stuff. Either way, and Aaron's playing it perfectly because Steven Spielberg, one of his best lines was production value, which is you don't waste production value. If it's there and you don't have to pay for it, <laughs> film it. <laughs> and that's why it's like, oh, yeah, you guys send a balloon test. Yeah, we don't have to put in a nickel. Oh, yeah, we're shooting this. We'll be there. <laughs> yeah, well, we're totally going to do this. It's like, here, sign this release form. And that that's that's how it's going to work. So good for them. And I'm glad everybody can get involved. I hope National Geographic shows up because they were really chomping at the bit. I know that's also an old saying. Uh, you know, actually, it's champing at the bit, but nobody says it like that. But that's the is actual it, expression. Is it champing at the bit? Believe it or not. Yes. Champing I'm going to look it up right now. But I remember one time saying it to my mother and she said, Darling, You're probably right. There's it's probably champing. My mother was right about. Do you hear that? It's on your side. I never have anything fly over. I'm not even in an area where anything would fly over. I just had a flyover. What? Uh oh. We're not. <laughs> Drone strike? <laughs> then one on me? I said not that close. Again? <laughs> Aim from the side, not over. Anyway. The, uh, the roof is completely bullet and bomb proof. So. <laughs> Seriously? You get a fashion budget and a bunker budget? Yes, I do. Oh, why? Uh, let me look up. I believe it's champing at the bit. I know you're right. It is champion at the bit. You're absolutely How do you know? Right. Uh, because I remember that from years ago. And it's I, one of those things. Yep, there it is. Uh, now champion. it says a definition of a bit is a metal mouthpiece, like for the horse, etc. Yes. Um, so champing at the bit, um, I always would think chomping at the bit, like a horse in a horse race, yeah. is you know biting on it. But uh, right. um, and champ is to bite, and champing in the bit is the same thing. To any equestrians out there, I did not mean to offend when I said hmm. that. I it just slipped, sort of like nuclear. Well, it, well, it's um, it, champing is sort of dead English, you know, because now everybody, even if it's wrong, says chomping, but yet it is correct to say. Sort of like a champing. dead metaphor, kind of like having your cake and eating it too, which I consider to be a dead metaphor. Because if you People have your cake, you, absol time. you absolutely can eat it too. If you have your cake, no, it's 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 absolutely. Well, if I have never... it, that means keep. I think. Well, have it, eat it, and still have it, but that takes too long. So it's like you just use some other thing. No, the cake thing just bothers me. Right, and no, amazing. don't use the word heterogeneous. That's one thing. That heterogeneous today. Just diverse. Unless you have a master's in English and you, you want to show off, you'll you underused it working for a, a newspaper in Toronto. <laughs> We the, have 316 viewers at this point. Which oh, crap. Threw, That's not who said the header. I'm sorry. Her, heterogeneous. That was um, the first article that I read. Th that was I'm sorry. That was our promoters, sorry, which are freaking geniuses. If they're listening right now, you guys can do <laughs> no wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> and the director, Daniel J. Clark. What a man. What a guy. I know. I know right. Oh, the chat is moving super fast. What just what? Are we oh, being are we being flat Earth rated, or are they just super super? No, weak? no, no, no one ra they, does raids anymore. Are they like hornets? 
or they're just getting um, no excited. Nora of No One's Flower says maybe the champing at the bit champing it or oh, it comes from Americans mishearing the British pronunciation of champ. Oh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Authentic intent says pie is easily the better choice versus cake. You know what, Josh? Authentic intent. I agree. I love pie. I Who love, doesn't love, love, love pie? pie more than cake? Yeah. I like cherry pie. My mom and dad, one of the houses we lived in had a cherry tree outside. And when the yeah. birds weren't attacking, my mother would get, and it was the sour cherries. Because at this time I was living in Michigan and they're famous for their sour cherries. And oh God, so good. And I've tried making it. I, could, I, don't, I can't get those same cherries from Michigan because I live in Houston, but I can never make anything as good as my I mom did. I don't really care what the pie is as long as the crust is homemade mm, and delicious. Oh, mm. the crust is. I honestly, I could. If somebody just served me a plate full of freaking pie crust and some you know residual. What? I, yes, and I like uh, pot pies as well. Before vegan, I would love nothing more than chicken pot pie. But I've been able to make a you vegan like those, pot pie without a chicken or even I don't not even a chicken substitute, but it's those really good. Four for a dollar chicken pot pies, those? No, the cheapest chicken pot pie to me as a child was the most amazing thing ever because my mother wouldn't let us eat that kind of stuff, frozen food. Back in the 60s and 70s, that's when it started coming but out. She would let you eat those? No, but she would give it to us for the babysitter to give us when my father mm. and she would go out to dinner. So whenever oh, they went out to dinner, we got to eat that junk. And it was Hungry so man good. dinners? Oh, that was, oh, that was wonderful. Those I were the days, hungry. my friend. Yeah, um, Ginger Sugarbush is asking me, Patricia, did you hear about the Toronto News? Yes, the Toronto News where supposedly, I don't know if it's a real event or fake, but uh, where there was a uh, some kind of incident with a guy in a car or a guy in a van. Did you hear about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about it. In fact, and, um, and in fact it went in and out of the news. Is, is it even out there anymore? Sorry. Well, I mean, I did get a couple of uh, messages and I... Uh, uh, a listener and friend named Jack wrote me, said, I hope and pray for your safety during the upcoming Toronto visit. Is it possible to, to discuss the Toron Toronto incident in the next secret show? You know, I don't really know enough about it, mm. although I've seen a lot of people do videos on it saying it wasn't real. Anybody have any idea in the live chat, real or fake? I mean, I don't know. Honestly, the, the pace things were because remember just well, before there's that so was many the, van attacks and runaway truck attacks and car attacks and there weren't yeah. those when you know we were young right there weren't this many school shootings to me something's ramping up what is somebody, it somebody needs to ban automatic transmissions plain and simple yeah anything with a wheel needs to be banned I'm thinking. no you know because of automatic rifles automatic <laughs> well just anyway, and I also wheel. didn't know by the way that they classify any mass shooting as four people or higher and I disagree. With that fundamentally working in the restaurant industry for a few years a four top that's that's common that's garden variety uh, a six top or, or more i'd say six remember because in, in i treat it like restaurants and some people are going oh you're being glib and you're being lighthearted no, no think about it six top that's when you kick in the 15 percent gratuity right off the bat i well, say 10 six people yeah. <laughs> 10 people we shouldn't joke <laughs> 10 people supposedly or allegedly nine actually revised oh really Okay, so someone came back to life and um, 14 were injured. Well, I saw somebody doing CPR on one of the victims and they were doing CPR and I'm not a CPR expert, but I understand the concept. I'm not uh, certified, but uh, Zulu one would know for sure because he's, right. you know, being a fireman, paramedic training, he understands where you do the compression and the pumps um, supposedly to the tune of the song Staying Alive, if you ever have to do it, you know, you know the song staying alive and that's how you can in your mind keep up the speed at which you need to pump someone's chest the person doing the compression at the scene was doing doing it below the uh chest uh the the breasts or the below the rib cage? chest which is wouldn't wouldn't be where you would do it you've got to do it above the huh. the crease of below the elbow and upward right where the heart is and uh that right there made no sense yeah. at all so right then you see that and you think, okay, so maybe that was a police officer who wasn't trained in CPR. And then you say, no, wait, they have to be. Hmm. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I, for me, I hate to say this, but I'm so jaded. I know. Now, I know. When it, it comes to that. Auto I mean, everything, uh, et cetera. Well, how, how, what can you trust and what can't you? Right. I mean, Man Mandalay Bay? Right. You know, once, once I started dissecting that thing, it's like, yeah, you know, a truck in Toronto, which is weird because you know we're going to be there 
you know, that was only a few blocks from where we're going to be. Was well, weird. yeah, that's scary. Well, you know, uh, Daniel uh, Nascimento, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, uh, said there were a lot of you witnesses. Did. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, Markovsky says every police officer is CPR trained, just what I, uh, just what I suspected. Uh, but, you know, I can't say one way or the other, so I won't. I wasn't there, thank goodness. Um, there was a lot of things that made it look weird, but, you know, I just know this. There's a lot more school shootings than there ever were before, and there's a lot more of these truck, van, out of control situations than there ever were before. Why? Why? If they're real, why? What's causing these real activities to to go all over? What people are crazier? There's some pretty damn crazy people. It's when I was not. Young. It's not That's us. Not it. I, I will say this, and I'm very proud of this. Let me segue off of it, which is. It's in the three years that we've been doing this, we've never seen an incident with a flat earther. And there have been opportunities. Don't even say it because no, don't give anybody not, any I'm ideas. Not, I'm not jinxing it. My baseball coach always told me that's like, don't jinx it. But no, I don't believe in that jinxing thing. But yet ugh. but but it hasn't happened. I mean, I the would powers that should not be might be listening. <laughs> early on with Jaron's boat, thought it would have happened. Yes. You could have pinned, I mean, honestly, the guy could have been out of the rider truck. How easy would it have been to say, Oh yeah, he was wearing a flat earth shirt or he had posted a flat earth thing. You know, check this out. Good point. Remember I said that Daniel up in the chat said there were a lot of witnesses. Well, guess what? Jesse James comes back and says there were a lot of witnesses in Boston too. True. Because most of the people in, at the Boston Marathon were um, innocent bystanders just watching right. or running in the race or, you know, there to support their family and friends. They weren't in on it. And there, there were, were witnesses. Not, there they were saw not. smoke. They saw people fall down. They saw blood. Does that mean it's real? Does that mean it's fake? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah. uh, so s this person is charged with murder for nine slash 10 people. So, yeah. yeah, I know. Sorry, I, I was more distracted by the whole the the uh, mass shootings classified as four people. Interesting. It's like, but but let's let's be clear here. It's four white people. Usually remember that. <laughs> I don't because, know because what if it's in a gangland. I mean, that's straight out of a movie. That's movie one hundred and one. If it's in a gang, a gang-related shooting, and five six people go down in a in a drug house, pff, nobody bats an eye. For we white people get gunned down in a. Thing. Um, Ginger Sugarbush says no, no. Nothing will stop me from coming to Toronto. So good. Me too. Oh, one, Ginger one Sugarbush thing. is going. Oh, uh, I'm not going. No. Um, after an event, real or fake, uh, it's like. It's a safe zone now because nothing's going to happen again in that same place for a well, while. <laughs> look, look how quickly, uh, again, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but look how quickly the Waffle House thing got squashed. I've never really? been to Waffle House. I've heard people call it Awful House, but. Uh, I mean, it, it, look, 3 a.m. In, in the morning, th four people got gunned down. They considered it a mass shooting. I think all the, the four victims were all black. And it's like, okay, what one were they doing at a Waffle House at 3 in the morning? People go after bars because they're yeah. drunk or hungover or whatever. Supposedly there was an Air 15 that jammed or ran out of ammo, was dropped on the ground, and they got the kid later. But that story was gone in less than 24 hours. Or maybe it was something like, you don't have real maple syrup, blam, 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 blam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you call these fresh? These are day old. This is Butterworth. That's not real. <laughs> I yeah. said no whipped cream. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? Uh, but but again, that story was was eclipsed by the Toronto thing really, really fast. It is kind of creepy, though, that the whole Toronto thing. I mean, I checked it out on the map. Literally, it's, it's not not that far from us. Well, if but real we people died or were injured, I really am sorry. Just like I, in all of these I events. Too. We're laughing and joking, but that doesn't mean. You know, oh, no, I laugh and joke pretty much everything. Yeah. But as so. Joey Sylvie says in the uh, live chat, hashtag auto hoax. <laughs> Again, how uh, how seriously can I take it? That's why I know you play politically correct most of the time. But if you st if you question the stuff early enough, I mean, if you go all the way, Sandy Hook was what two thousand twelve. Seems like eons ago, doesn't it? it? I think it was two thousand twelve. It was six six years ago. Seems a lot longer. And so after that, what? How much faith can you put into any of them? You you immediately? Why would you? It's the cry wolf thing. Why would you take? Oh yeah, this one's serious. No, that one wasn't. But this one is really. Sure, because if you get burned again, you know, the whole shame on you, shame on me, George Bush thing. Yeah, exactly. 
Won't get fooled again. <laughs> Won't get fooled again. <laughs> I know, honestly, I will never use that reference for just that reason. Because if you lose your train of thought, yeah, it's it, you can <laughs> you could be like, uh, yeah, that's just what, like George Bush, exactly. He, he was go, he was he was out there, and it's like, oh, crap, I'm not pulling it back. And you know, he'd never and whisper in his ear. There was no teleprompter. Mm. Uh, this is funny. Uh, Rob Morrill in the live chat says that he and his friends or family or something used to go to Hojo's after the bars closed. Howard Johnson's. I remember going there as a little girl. Howard Johnson. I've never heard it called Hojo's. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, also, I lived in California for, oh, no, no, it was Michigan for a while. And there was a place people used to go after after the bars closed, which was called Lions, L-Y-O-N-S. Similar kind of vibe. Horrible food. But then you know, you're buzzed or drunk or tired or something and you eat something. And then when you go home, you don't feel so good. <laughs> and they have Waffle House here in uh, in Houston. But I, and they also have something called House of Pies. And I love pie, but I just know that's not going to be good. I just know that won't be good. And of course, um, what's it called? International House of Pancakes, IHOP. Right. Yeah. And I used to go to IHOP as a young girl, little girl, 10 or something. I, at a time in my life, we lived in Florida. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting how you say a mass shooting is four because a crime of passion can be three, three, because, you know, let's say it's a man right. who kills his girlfriend and the one that, that he, she's or, been shooting with know, and then himself. A, unless it's a self-identified type situation. Let's not judge all God's children. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't. Whatever, but yeah, there's going to be three. So somebody cheats on somebody else, and in a fit. Oh, well, you you shoot one other person accidentally, like the doorman. It's a mass shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, but they're never going to do that. It's got to usually be four in a. You know, there's so many little criteria. It's got to be four in a public place. Um, because, oh, let's say it was a key party that was happening, and oh. the whole thing just went south. Somebody got some bad crack, and you know, just started blasting. Or glass. <laughs> How are you going to report that? Or uh, glass? Yeah, they're hitting the glass. They were in there for three, four days. Um, can't thought a photographer names. says, can't forget Denny's, which is true. Denny's. Denny's. That's another one. Yeah. You ever go down at Denny's like 1 a.m. and order off their dinner menu? Order like a steak? That kitchen no. staff does not know what the hell they are doing outside of breakfast. I would say that a kitchen staff at Denny's would never know what to do with steak. And probably the meat that they have, and I'm saying this is a vegan, okay? Yeah. The meat that they have is probably really low level, low, low, low level. Oh, like, it still has marks where the jockeys were hitting it. Yeah, exactly. Or it was like, well, we could make this into dog food, but instead, let's sell it to Denny's. <laughs> Grade F meat. Yeah. But, you know, if I have to go to one of those places, because I'll eat anywhere, but always keeping it vegan, there are certain things I would order, which would be toast. You know, I could have toast and jam. Depending upon how they make the waffles, it's possible to order that. Or pancakes, it's possible, depending on what the ingredients are. It, it's so. tough to screw up breakfast, and Denny's does a great job at that. My know, brother, you know. as children, used to order, I remember the name of it, Moon Over Miami. <laughs> I've, I've ordered Moon Over Miami. <laughs> And we live kind of we lived in Hollywood, which was close to Miami. So Moon Over Miami, Miami. I don't know. Hollywood, Hollywood, Florida, as yes, compared. Hollywood, to Florida. Um, we've got uh McVice saying biscuits and gravy. Yeah, that's a southern thing, which I've never had. So yeah. Uh, Sage Seal says, I got a steak at IHOP once at 3 a.m. Steak and eggs for $14. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, honestly really, yeah, it really varies. Steak and eggs, you shouldn't be able to screw that up, but really depends. Just order it medium. And we've got somebody in their live chat. Harp will not be silent, says they're literally plugging restaurants. Oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're plugging getting restaurants from every one of those restaurants. And to where's my get paid like check? 10 grand each time we mention them. <laughs> uh, fine. All right. Well, I'll go the other way. Fine. You remember Subway? Yes, remember it still Subway? exists. I was I, there was a story that ran today and this goes takes a dark turn, but I got to mention to you, maybe I won't go all the way with this, where they said Cl Subway is closing 500 of, the, of their restaurants. They actually have the most franchises of any any company in the world when it comes to that genre. And they took a hit when they found out that their bread had an ingredient that was also found in yoga mats. I don't eat at Subway. So. Well, you also know when they took a hit. You, you remember Jared, right? Yeah, the guy who lost all that weight eating Subway sandwiches. Do you know why he all of a sudden disappeared from the commercials in 2015? He got really overweight again? No. He did some bad things on the was internet. Was it glass? 
No, no, Can it was say? more of a pornographic nature. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, he got in a lot of trouble. I won't. I won't get into it too much here. But I'll, I'll tell you off air. But look up Jaron Fogel's stuff. He's in. He's in prison. He's not getting oh out for a long gosh. time. Yeah, and and again, that's I hate that about the news, and that is when like a corporate, you know, like when Bill O'Reilly got kicked out of off of Fox, right? It was like one day he was there, one day he wasn't. There wasn't any little send off. Wasn't that and, kind of like the precursor to the whole Me Too thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with okay. Jared's thing, it was. It was it, well, it was, it was Stephen dumb. Chess just says pedo, so I understand. There yep. you go. So Earth Pond says it too. Um, David Gilbert is saying the same thing. I yeah, have no yeah. idea, and sheesh, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I did not know because when it happens, they just make that transition seamlessly. It's like one day he's in the commercials, the next day there isn't a poster with him anywhere. He, he's gone off the website. It's like he was never there. Yeah, he's been uh, just like the just like uh, the book 1984. He's his 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 image is now down the memory hole. <laughs> So to that critic, whoever was saying that, yeah, where's my subway check? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're not going to be paying me for that. Little where's our check for anything? Darn it. <laughs> Again, we're, I don't care what this thing ends up. I, you know, of course, you know, I get a little money from the book and a little money from YouTube and a little money from the, uh, the radio station, but I don't care what the amounts are as long as the community moves forward. And it has been in leaps and bounds and, I'm just happy to, and I will be taking so much hell when this thing comes out <laughs> because you know, it's like, yeah, put his picture up there. Well, and if any of your friends from Whitby Island, because you, unlike me, grew up in the same place, you grew up your entire life and still live in the same basic area. Me, I've lived in Michigan and Florida. And then as a young mm -hmm. adult, I lived in Northern California, slightly in Southern, I lived in Southern California. And then I lived in New Orleans and then Houston, Texas, meaning my friend group is not the same as if you, I'm not going to go to a restaurant and run into somebody I went oh, to no, high no, school no, no. with. I, and I won't but, either. Because but, I, but you could potentially, where there'll be people who'll be like, Oh, yeah. Mark I Sargent. Was, yeah, he was always a little different. <laughs> well, if they go up to Whidbey, sure. But remember, I was gone for half of my 20s, all my 30s, and most of my 40s in Colorado. Prison? No, no. No, <laughs> no academy training. The, um, oh, yes. uh, I, I, let us not talk about our daughter. It's, it's Soviet Russia. The, um, <laughs> oh, motherland. The, um, and uh, I have the vodka here. It, I yeah, drink you have the vodka. Yeah, there's no accident she, that, that Patricia's drinking vodka because, you know, we toast to our... Her, to our daughter and our all daughter of our comrades. Our daughter Croatia, yeah. I think she could have done better, like Ukraine or something. <laughs> anyway, so... Or Belarus, maybe. It's, so, uh, no, what I was getting... Where, where was I going with this? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, something about uh, Russia. Uh, no, 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 no. Marka, our daughter? No, no. no. Training? Oh, growing up in Whitby oh, yeah, Island. Gro yeah, growing, growing <laughs> up in Whitby. No, because I, most of the people, if you grow up on Whitby Island, you leave. A lot of people leave. Right, right. It's like, because it's this rural island. Look, I left. There's a whole bunch of people that left. And class reunions, it's tough to get people to come back. So, uh, but people, the, the difference is because of the internet and all social media, you can, people can track you down now. So yeah, I've had people reaching out to me even with the limited exposure we've had already saying, Oh my God, I saw you on this and that. And, and people have tracked me down because of that. If this thing gets any, yeah, any bigger, I'm sure all the people that are digging me up, trying to kind of like classmates, remember when classmates.com came out? Mm, okay. Yes. In fact, uh, classmates.com, I think I signed up for that once and then. Yeah. Everybody did it. because, because social media wasn't really a thing, but classmates.com yeah. was. And yeah, people and you would get lots of spam emails, not from them, but they I think they well, sold your yeah, address and long lost boyfriend, yeah. girlfriend, drunk at 2 a.m. going, oh, I'm going to send them an email. That happened all the time. Classmates.com. Yeah, not a it's not, not as bad as like ChristianMingle.com. But how would you know what ChristianMingle.com? Yes, I read. Oh, oh, I see. I thought I, I know. signed I up for it at one point. A lot of media. I know the stories that are out there. Well, because ChristianMingle.com, it's the whole because think about it. if you're a man and you're looking for vulnerable straight shooting women that you mean straight shooting with a firearm no not, be not, not, not like karen b with, uh, <laughs> weak ass five five six crap the uh no i you know women you know it's an easy place to, it's some weird thing you look up some horror stories on christianmingle.com 
because wow. yeah, from a woman's side of view, a point of view, because you get a lot, basically a lot of non-Christian guys that oh, go I in see. there. They're just going in there, poking around, taking so. advantage of upstanding women who are you know looking for something, and they're like, yeah, they're vulnerable and probably naive. Well, let's go to town. I uh, signed up on Facebook with, uh, not signed up, I got involved in a group just two days ago called Flat Earth Match, FE Dating and Community Network. And I went in and, and just said, oh, I didn't know this existed, you know, because I'm single. And I went in there and put, you know, you're supposed to write, write a little bio. I wrote like a really quick bio, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for adding me to this group. And yeah. then a number of people who I know were in there saying, hi, hi. And then one person said, welcome, Patricia, but I don't think it's you, <laughs> but hey. <laughs> oh, that's nice in a way. And then other people are like, yeah, it is her. <laughs> so <laughs> it was pretty funny. Superstars um, don't show up in those things. No, that's crazy. But uh, yeah, um, so wow. uh, I'm, I'm in that. And then uh, there was another one, F.E. Love. Remember that app, F.E. Love? I don't even know if that exists anymore. I remember that. But I think I'll I sign up for really that. I don't worry about that because I have guys that are calling me. I girls, girls that are calling me <laughs> all the time. Why did I say guys? And it's so weird. What else? There's one other one. Um, uh uh, Geo. Why can't I think of his name right now? Chris Geo? No, no, no. Geo Storm? Geo Storm, Geo Streber. Geographic, no, no. Geology. Oh my gosh, he's got, he has an app that he made. And why Geo, I can't. Geo, that crappy three-cylinder car? No, no. <laughs> Geo Prism? Does Geo Prism still exist? Yes. Oh. Well, I mean, they're out there. I don't know if they still make new ones. Well, I can't think of the name. Oh, it's called Flat Earth Friends. That's what it's called. Flat, Flat Earth, Earth Friends. Friends. Uh, F-E-F. Nice. -E and uh, that's, that's he nice. came up with an app. And, and it's only for friendship, not dating or anything. But anyway, Flat he came up with Friends. that. Uh, Geo Shifter. My gosh. Thank you. Uh, oh, that guy. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Geo Shifter is cool with an amazingly cool voice. Anyway, I signed up for that app too, which is friendship, not dating. But I don't really use any of them at all. Hmm. So. Sure. Uh, Martin Leake, he's in their live chat. And Martin, I mentioned earlier the Flat Earth Convention UK coming up uh, the 27th, 28th, and 29th of April 2018. And you're a speaker. And wow, I mean, uh, the feeling that you must have in yourself that, as you always say, it's going to be epic. But I wonder, Martin, if you've got any sort of nervousness at all going on uh, as we why? get closer. Why would you do that to him? Why, why don't you just, why don't you go the other way and say, man, I would be scared to die. I wouldn't even sleep the night before. Seriously, man. <laughs> no, Martin would be awesome. Don't screw it up because you never be awesome. make a, uh, I get a second chance to completely screw up on stage. He will, he'll be great. And no, you know, the great. thing about any sort of public speaking is you don't have to be an expert in Flat Earth. We all are some sort of public speaker, right? If you've got a channel. Uh, Glass of wine helps. Little we're all social. Things. We're social creatures. I mean, that's why we are in live chats with each other and making comments, you know? Um, it's a, it's a community, whether or not people believe that it is, some of us yeah. have totally different ideas of how all this should go, but even when I am in front of a group, I still get the thing that all, um, people on stage get regardless how long you've been doing it. And that is you get amped up because you want to do, you want to do well, you know, you want to, yeah, that's the thing you want to do. Well, that's the part that I'm sure will be the quote unquote stage fright or nervousness that anybody's speaking at the, well, no, that's, that's a little different though. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's a flip side of it. You should think about it. Like you want to do well. The other side is kind of like, uh, like if you've ever heard the term, uh, the team's just trying not to lose versus trying to win. Uh, if you're thinking that, Oh God, I hope I want to screw up. Then you're on the defensive. Yes. But doing i want to do well then you're going out there you know you know treat it seriously treat it like a shakespeare thing yeah you should shouldn't think what's the worst that could happen when you go do something you should right. in your mind visualize the best possible outcome yeah so yeah. Uh, martin's in the chat says uh people are saying that he needs to strip while he's on stage <laughs> like, what my chat's gone right down the old toilet. i don't know if i do that i don't know <laughs> if that's his best move no probably but, not probably yeah. not but yeah. uh, anyway, that's all right. Um, Whatever, as long well, as long as his outfit underneath is is good, you know, like a like a nice fur lined thong. Ooh, thing. that sounds yeah, kind of comfortable. Um, Ukdina Walker is in our live chat, and last time she was in the live chat, she was saying that she wasn't feeling that well. So, and I've emailed you, Ukdina, and you've not answered. Well, she so, hasn't been doing well. I know she has she has health issues. Yeah, I know. I so don't like that. I don't want me. that. I hope she doesn't die, but. Well, we're all going to die, but, it, but, but you know what, what is after flat earth, 
to me, the idea of death is not what it used to be. I'm not frightened of death. Good for you. I'm not welcoming death or anything or looking to die so or something. But we don't have a death pact that's <laughs> in our future? <laughs> no, I don't think right. so. Mm -hmm. But um, Just putting it out there. I, I know it's part of life. And what comes beyond that could be even more amazing. We just don't know. And I, the only thing I hope about death is, is that I am lucid between the point of being here and not being here. So I can get this, enjoy it, if that so makes sense. That's going to be difficult because you're not really lucid now. Oh, okay. Well, that could be the alcohol. <laughs> Chris, Chris Pontius. <laughs> you you don't want to blame it on the alcohol. That's fine. But, but you know what I mean by being lucid, yeah, yeah, yeah. By, by, you know, when you read authors' famous last words, some of them have died lucid and said something, be it important or not, about the experience that they're having at that moment. My favorite is a recent one, which was Steve Jobs. I think my favorite before him was, uh, oh, what's his face on the OK, Doc Holliday from the OK Corral. But Steve you know Jobs. that my father loved Old West history. And when he was a radio DJ at the stations that he owned, he did the morning show. Um, and his DJ name was Doc Holliday. Really? Yeah, it was. Small world weird. It's because we're connected. Yeah. The uh, Steve Jobs when when he died, and you gotta remember that man did a lot of LSD and a lot of other stuff. But he he just said over and over again. He was going, "Oh wow, oh wow," you know. So he probably caught a glimpse. I think. Interesting. Yeah, no, no. I just looked up. Um, Oh, this is weird. It's called Creepy Last Words, what 29 people said right before dying. Really? That's One guy says, my grandfather on his deathbed said, they have no eyes. <laughs> Someone else said, fire, fire, there's fire everywhere. <laughs> These sorry. are not the last words I was speaking of. Oh, come on. Really? You really want to end the show with, with those? Yeah, this is true. But there's many books that go through the famous last words of famous people. Um, and some of them are very interesting and very, very revealing. Now we're talking about all this while we're talking about Ukdina Walker, which is not good to be associating her oh, with death. Oh, right. Yeah. Ukdina, don't die. Well, yeah. We want you around. We we love you. I do. I love you. And I don't want you to be sick. That's, you know, as And I you, haven't had a chance to whisper sweet nothings into her ear. But she's the kind of person that is handling everything in her life as it should be handled. You know? Right. She, She's not afraid of anything. She's been through a lot in her life and is a very, a very strong person and a very good role model, actually. So if you've not got to know Udina Walker over the years, then you should. You should now. She is here in our live chat now. There was something I was going to um, tell you about. It's a movie I saw. Really? And I never see movies lately. Uh, and I can't it. even. I've probably um, seen it. What? I've probably seen it. Did you have a premise, an actor? Oh, gosh. I can't even remember. I saw the movie. Uh, anyway, it's called The Quiet Place. Oh, in the theater. I haven't seen it. Yeah, heard, it just came I out. Heard, I heard great things. Did well, it is actually a, a good movie. Say again? You went on a date. No, it wasn't a date. Not at all. You, you don't have to lie to make friends. No, no. Haven't been on a date forever. Like years. Oh, I'm about to say, no, that sounds like one of my things. 94. 95% of my movies I saw by myself. Going to a movie yourself, there's no shame in that. Shame? Are you kidding? I took pride in it. In fact, it's actually cool. You know, it can be cool. Well, you don't have to mess with other people. There's no Yeah, that's true. But it's nice to go with somebody of like mind so you can enjoy some of the little insider jokes or whatever. But anyway, yeah. Emily Blunt is in the movie and John Krasinski, and they're married in real life. So it's this movie about, I won't give any spoilers, but something happened. It doesn't tell you what really. It's up to your imagination in which uh, the world is the same world, but yet you can't make any noise or these like creaturey things that kind of look like the alien. Uh, oh, will come right. and kill I know, you I know the premise. I know the based premise, on yeah. sound. They have these like giant ears and they'll hear anything, like even like like a glass breaking, they'll be on you like that, and they'll swoop you out of the room and kill you, but they won't kill any uh, anyone else around you. And it the movie is about how the 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 family, there's one family with um, you know, like a husband and wife, she is pregnant, they have three child other children. 
how they deal with the situation. There were a couple of things in there where there were plot holes and I'm like, oh, if they only did this different and I'll tell you one of those in a moment. But the reason right. I'm talking about this movie is right away space programming. And this is where you wanna go to a movie if you have a significant other or a good friend who's a flat earther because right. you'd see it in the movie that had nothing to do with space and say, oh my gosh, why was that in there? Okay, so from the beginning, one of the characters draws a rocket, a childhood sort of rocket drawing in chalk on the ground. He has a toy NASA rocket, okay, which plays a huge role in the plot. And then later, the uh, they go into his bedroom, and in his bedroom, his baby mobile, mobile is hanging above his bed, and it's, uh, it's planets. It, there was no need for any of that in this movie. It could have right. been an Iron Man figurine. It could have been replace it with any uh, any child's toy, but it's NASA stuff and space stuff in there. Interesting. And, you know, it had to be a toy that made noise. That's the only reason that they would have the spaceship was it had to be something that made noise. How many other toys make noise that you can think of? Tons of them. Tons of them. It doesn't have, it could be a toy car that made beep beep yeah. noise, right? I know. So, uh, why did they use a NASA spaceship in there? Why was the mobile above the bed planets? It could have been fish swimming or any other mobile that there is or mobile, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Producers sinking, inserting things into movies and television is very easy in the model that we use for entertainment because of silent producers. All, all I think someone do, tells them to put that in there. Not oh, I know, someone I know, tells but, the but set dresser is, to put it in there. Well, yeah, but it's a producer. Because remember, mm -hmm. all you have to do, if you guys don't know what a producer is, all they technically have to do is give money to the project. So if you have $100,000, you want to give it to any film studio, they'll say, okay, what do you want for $100,000? And some some people will be small. It's like, well, we'd like I'd like to insert this little thing here. or this. Little, and sometimes it's very benign. But sometimes they can do that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Add, in, put a globe in a classroom. Put a globe yeah. in a detective's office. I was for surprised no there reason. was no globe in this house, but it, it, it might as well have put it. A NASA spaceship toy. Yeah. There, I don't even know if there is such a thing. Right. Unless you went to a. Space oh, no, there's NASA museum. toys. Well, we, when we went to NASA here in Houston, you could find those sorts of things. But and, these people lived in the middle of nowhere, and it just wouldn't be. It just right. wouldn't, wouldn't be. Wouldn't be. And and it was specifically purposeful that they put that in there most right. of the time. Eh, it's too little too late. We're already, you know, right there with them. Let's see what's going on. Flat Accord Music's talking about Poncho Pete. Brooklyn Smith is here. Uh, Dave Gilbert is here as well. And, ah, Ginger Sugarbush is talking to Paul Ahn, formerly Paul on the plane. And they're talking about kittens. Uh, Ginger says his kittens are in heat. <laughs> Love kittens. <clears throat> the thing about kittens is they grow up into cats, and I've got three, but... I would love to be the crazy cat lady. The most I've ever had was six, six cats. You had six cats? At one point in my life. None That's of them odd. are alive now because it was quite a long time ago and they, sad to say, went through their natural lifespan and died off one by one. But uh, I miss There's them. A, there was a librarian at my high school who, again, cliche, uh, older woman who had, and you could probably guess, her license plate on her car was Meow 14. Oh. Yeah. Well, the thing about cats is if you love them or dogs or any animal that you love, people will know you love them and always tell you like, oh, well, my friend found a cat and we don't know what to do with it. We're going to bring it to the Humane Society or some kill type shelter. And mm -hmm. you say, no, no, I'll take it. And that kind of thing. Right. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, Closet Steve says, six cats. Wow. Well, you know, I started off with one and got another and then... It, it happened. I I have three now, but having six was okay because I lived in a really big place. Right. Um, I maybe I am a crazy cat woman. I'm not no, ashamed of that. No, no, people. I'm don't not ashamed of that. Say that about you, as far as you yeah, know. I've got three cats and I love them. I don't have children. My life didn't work out that way. Right. So, you know what you're gonna do? I'm not. They're not my child replacements or anything creepy like that. It's a you know, yeah, um, but, good times for all. Says I have six kittens running around my room. It's so fun. Yeah. If you've got the space and you've got the love in your heart, uh, have a bunch of dogs, have a bunch of cats. I mean. What are you saying? Put a little love in your heart? Put a little love in your heart. Yeah. yeah. I mean, animals, 
are wonderful and they connect you to not just the animal world in general, but to other human beings. It just gives you this lovely feeling of love. When I'm coming home from some kind of an event or party and I'm driving home, I think of my cats are home to greet me. You know, it's where you you think your dog's home to greet you. Um, even if you've got a husband, wife and kids, it's just a great feeling when you put your key in your door and they're there for you. And they're not there because they want to eat. My cats want me to pet them. They want to rub up against me. I could put food in their dish and they, they'll pay attention to me for a few minutes before eating. And because, they fear the beatings. <laughs> well, they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how animals are. They, they love you. The writing and crop it's ain't unconditional. just unconditional. And it's kids. beautiful. Yeah. I know. So, no, your cats are very loyal and devoted. They're and, nice. Yes. Everyone's saying cats are great pants. I love dogs. Da, da, da. Yeah, I love dogs too. I grew up with a St. Bernard dog. So that's a big, that's a big pooch. I grew up with dogs and cats and my cats were beach cats. Those are, that's the weirdest thing when you have beach cats. What do they live outside on the beach and then come in? Uh, yeah, pretty much. They're outside all the time unless they're, unless, you know, it's fair weather. So if it's rainy. They'll stay on the couch, but if it's outside, oh yeah. And plus remember the beach is just one giant litter box. <laughs> so I never thought of that. They never, there was never a litter box for years and years and years. We never had to, never had to buy litter because they were, you know, it's the beach is a natural litter box for cats. True. Uh, as our golf courses, the sand trap. Right. <laughs> I didn't even think of the golf courses. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. My mother was scared of cats. That's why I didn't have cats growing up. And Aww. when my sister and brother and I moved out of the house and were living on our own, we all got cats. Weird. I don't know why that, that is, happened. That is but. weird. Because you, well, we want most of that which we cannot have. My mother was scared of them because I don't even remember this, but she said somebody brought one to show and tell. And she was uh, in my kindergarten. And she was one of the mothers who was there at the kindergarten. She didn't work there, but I guess it was a volunteer thing. And yeah. the cat, the kitten or something crawled, uh, ran up her leg and, with claws, of course. And she screamed and was thought the cat was attacking her. She had no cat experience. So from then on, she thought that cats just randomly jump at you and start attacking, which PTSD with cats. So anyway, Happens. Joey Sylvie just uh, donated $4.99 to the super chat who says blessings to Akadina and then globe exit, hashtag globe exit, hashtag FE offensive. You can buy a pot pie with that. I certainly could. There are vegan pot pies, just letting you know. Mm. They sell them at Whole Foods. Um, <laughs> they do. I don't doubt it. Or any natural food store. They, you know what? To be honest, they're not as good uh, as uh, the chicken pot pies I remember, but you could make your own. Those are good. Right. So just get a good cookbook. Quick reminder to or everyone. Because I'm not pushing veganism. You do what you want. I Hey. You know, uh, you and I are friends and we've eaten together quite a lot. And I never chide you about what you have I ever. Uh, no, but I think the calling us friends might be a little That's bit true. We're only co workers, uh, um, acquaintances. Yeah. Do, do you feel when you're with me an unspoken pressure to be vegan, even if I don't talk about it? No. Good, because I don't ever want to make anybody feel uncomfortable by my presence. No. It's just when you're glaring at my ham sandwich. You know? When I'm, you know, like taking one of my kitchen knives and trying to like chop your hand off. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, no, 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 of course not. No, 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 no. I mean, people make their own decisions and mm -hmm. I offer occasionally within videos a comment about it, but that's about it. Um, people can do what they want because they will do what they want. But look, hey, look, I, you, <laughs> you have a lot more discipline than I do. And, and, and my and veganism sort of is only about the animals. That's the reason. That's yeah. the reason I'm vegan. Not for diet, not for anything else. People, um, you know, love bacon. They love steak. They love, I grew up on all that. I totally get where you're coming from. I and don't eat nearly as many cats as I used to. Exactly. So yeah. you do what you want to do and I do what I want to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's all cool. A uh, quick reminder for people that are looking up the stats, because I get can, they get confused every once in a while. When you type in flat Earth, sort by upload date. That's under filter in the upper right hand corner of your screen, and you'll see the real number. Because when we type it in normally, we come in at five point one, but when we sort by upload date, we come in at twenty point four. Very important because like Donald Trump, he comes in the same numbers no matter what, go figure. But other people and other topics, they come in 
uh, YouTube changed their algorithms. So we're still way, way up there. We're not going down. We're not going backwards. We just keep going up and up and up. What will happen at one point when we look at the stats or you look at the stats, you're a number cruncher, and you see that Flat Earth is less popular? Uh, I don't know. I know you don't will. foresee that ever happening, but I don't that would be a not good day. Point, because it, I don't think it'll go backwards before. It, it may plateau, but it, it can hasn't. plateau. The, the thing about Flat Earth is every single person on Earth needs to know about it. Yeah. You know, no, I, I'm just saying that the, the strange thing with flat earth and social media is it inspires people to make their own videos. How many times have we seen it? It's like, oh, yeah, flat earth. I'm so excited. I'm going to create a YouTube channel first time in my life. And I'm 55 I years old. I created a YouTube channel first time in my life. All you know, it, yeah. because of flat earth, I was toying with the idea to do makeup tutorials or maybe a vegan channel. And I just never right. did it because although I'm passionate about certain things, you know, like vegan makeup channel, that'd be cool for right. women over 50 or older women. Um, I am passionate about that or something, but not like flat earth at all. This wasn't just something I thought, oh yeah, maybe, I don't know. This was something it's, it was like, I need to make a channel right now. I need yeah. to do this. I need to, I need to be a part of this. This is the most amazing revelation I've ever had in my life. And it's happening now. It's not something I'm going to read about, you know, like a history book where you can say, oh, wow, those people at that time, they they were able to participate in blah, blah, blah. Too bad I wasn't born then. There's nothing interesting happening now. The interesting thing is happening now. And all of us in the live chat and watching this at a later time are all part of it to, to one degree or another. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It appears to be your destiny. I uh, guess. Mine too. I didn't want to do flat. Maybe you were made for this. Uh, but it's a pretty safe bet at this point. You know yeah. what? Maybe you were. Maybe if you look back at your life and all the, you know, when you did like customer service on the phone with people, yeah. you know, when you were helping people out on the phone, figure out what was wrong with their computer and, and all of that. Right. And the video gaming stuff, which was the tech aspect of you and the, 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 the su customer support was the phone and the speaking aspect of you. Maybe putting those two together creates this person, you, who can put together videos and who's good with speaking with people and getting information out very clearly and simply. Voila, we have Mark Sargent. Oh, yeah. yeah. And maybe my radio background gave me a okay with speaking on a microphone sort of thing, like a comfortableness. Yeah. And so, your academy training gave you somewhat thick skin to Americans anyway. <laughs> Oh, by the way, did you see that clip? The 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 me dubbed in Russian? Yes. You put that on the start of your most recent video of Strange Truth World. Frequency Radio, Strange World's Tuesday show. Yeah. yeah what were yeah. they saying about you in Russian? That's the real uh, I don't know. Look at this fool. <laughs> this dogs. Obviously insane from here is his address. Must go stalk him immediately. From, from corrupt American <laughs> education system. No, if the um uh, no, they were just dubbing. I was talking about that little clip was me. You know, I was saying uh, that particular question. I, it was so loud. I couldn't even figure out what the hell they were saying or I was saying was the 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 academic part where uh, if you were into archaeology or geology, that's why it sounded like he was repeating himself. I see. Yes, it was. It was some sort of ology was being tacked on because I was going, well, why is he keep saying the same thing over and over? And it was archaeology, geology, hydrology. Uh, all the different scientific disciplines that would change if the flat earth was was correct. But yeah, they shot with me for a freaking entire afternoon and they used ugh, less than a minute. But whatever. It was fine. It was in this. It was the biggest channel in Russia. So that's very cool. Not going to complain. So I, I decided to throw that in and kind of cut to whatever. So people says, why is he talking in Russian? Well, there you know, it's cool. It just shows it's getting out. It's getting out. It was so all Russian. across the plane. It was so Russian too. The the team literally it was Alexei, Natalia, and Olga. I mean, really? Could they not get more cliched names? I know, right? And the the sheet I had, the, the questions were in English, but the sheet they had was totally in Russian because they couldn't read English or not very well. They could understand English, spoken English, but not read it. Or well, I told yeah. you I I had a, a a female friend and she is from Russia, St. Petersburg specifically, um, and she is an American citizen now, and she learned English. I met her when she was kind of making the transition and getting her citizenship, and she called toes foot fingers. Right, good cover by the way. Yeah, friend, fellow yeah, agent, friend, yeah. a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she was childhood. That whole <laughs>
Yeah, I know. Um, I saw the movie, Charlie. Or no, that was Angelina Jolie in that movie where she was a Russian agent. Ah. Where she it, Salt. That was the name of the movie where she was oh, a Russian yeah. agent and didn't even know it. They repressed her memory. Interesting. I didn't uh, see that one. Yeah, raised uh, as a child in deep Russia. Mm -hmm. um, Skyfly Bry is here saying hello to everyone. And let's see. Uh, Libra 61 star says, uh, I don't kill bugs. I kill mosquitoes. And uh, Okdina was saying that she finds tarantulas where she lives and puts them in jars and doesn't kill them. So we've got a, an animal saving conversation going on right now. Mm. It's pretty cool. I mean, if I see a spider in my house, spiders are good because they, you know, eat other insects, but yeah. I don't really want webs all over my house. So Sorry. I'll let them spider. Walk. Spider ends up in the bathtub. He's going down the drain. Well, I hate when that happens accidentally even, but I try to get an insect on a, like a piece of paper, toilet paper, Kleenex, whatever, paper towel, and yeah. then throw it out in the yard and then it can Cur walk away. Curiosity didn't just kill the cat, killed the spider. Well, my cats, if uh, an insect flies in when I open my door in the evening, the uh, insect will fly into the light and it's doomed because three cats, sorry. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just uh, start attacking and then they end up knocking over lamps and... I've actually had to use this stuff called museum putty. It's this clear gooey stuff that won't hurt your exactly. furniture, yep. but you can glue anything down. Yep. I've, uh, some of my lamps are glued down to the table because I come home from being out and there's a lamp broken because they're running and jumping. So yep. it'd be great if there was an earthquake here. Everything in my house would just be fine. That's <laughs> what you want to wish for. Nice. Yeah. yeah it'd be great if there was an earthquake. Uh huh. I would or hate there to be an earthquake or another hurricane. I, I heard that. The, the this year's hurricane season in the Houston, Texas area is going to be worse than ever before. Mm. My God, it was bad enough last year. Yeah. Hurricane Harvey. I mean, I was in Michigan during the thing, but it, I was super worried. And you came to visit me after the hurricane was over, but you did see some areas around where I live that were pretty bad. And they're still working mm -hmm. on fixing them. Right. Wait. Not good looking at all. Hurricane's looking good. through the live chat and Not seeing what's going on. Uh, let's see. Everybody seems to be having a nice time. I, I certainly do hope since the next time we talk, we're going to be talking to you from uh, Toronto. I'm going to be doing a well, live stream. If from, you can. If I can, if I've got, if the internet, I'm sure it's yeah, going to work. the Canadian, whatever, We don't know where we're going to be. We'll, we'll make it. I'll make I it. Mean, work. I, yeah. Toronto is modern, of course. I just don't know what the rules are. Yeah. So I'll be doing that. Let's see. Maybe on on Sunday, even maybe we'll do a little "Hi, we're here" thing. Why would we do it on Sunday? We can do it Wednesday after we do the documentary. No, we could do a "Hi, we're here" thing on Sunday. I don't know, maybe. All right, whatever. I don't know. You know, I, uh, how can I say no to you? You can't. That's yeah. in the contract. In the contract. Um, hi to the Hori Sheet Show, and good of all seventy-two. It said happy birthday to you, Mark. Uh, if you watch the beginning of the show, if you've caught up with, if you've got into the show late. The beginning of the show is me pretending to be Marilyn Monroe <laughs> singing happy birthday to Mark, a la Marilyn singing it to John F. Kennedy. Uh, yeah, it's so really pathetic. <laughs> I don't even have the words. It no, seriously. I, I, that is, it was touching. Yeah. And uh, I'm wearing a blue blazer now, but I was wearing an evening dress then. It's still, still here. still wearing an evening dress. It's there, underneath there. the blazer. Well, I didn't want anybody to come to the show later and say, why is she wearing a low-cut evening gown doing a flat earth show? Right. That would be weird. Totally weird. Right. Um, anyway, uh, Effie Meshika is here. And um, so many other cool people are here showing up late. A Life is here. And um, hello to everyone. I appreciate you being here, everyone. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it on social media or do whatever you need to do to it. Uh, thanks again to Joey Sylvie for donating to the Super Chat. Any Super Chat I get, since this isn't a, I don't get money to do the show. I just give it to somebody else in a future super chat. So that's what happens to it. And so I appreciate it. Um, I want to say hello to Flat Earth Vegans too. And uh, Ron Hagberg, who says I missed the beginning. And Flat Plain Oregon is here too. And uh, Flat Plain Oregon says, we're having a good time. Most of the trollers got shut down or ignored, which is really the key. Just ignore. There are people who have super cognitive dissonance when they're faced with the idea of flat earth. And one of the emotions that comes into them is anger and hatred. And you do see that sort of trolling. I just feel bad for them. And therefore, I don't want to fight with them. So you, you can't really fight with people that you feel sorry for. And 
all of us at one point or another, when we were faced with this idea initially thought, uh, that's ridiculous. So that's where they are. And you know, there you go. Um, <laughs> Snowfire is here as well. And Sundog is here. Interesting. Snowfire, Sundog. These are nice names. Anyway, that closes out the show. And anything you want to say as a sort of last closing? How do you feel being 50? I mean, that, uh, I mean I'm mean, i 55, like, so I'm older. <laughs> want me to tell you how it goes from here forward? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Because it gets I, better. It if gets you would have, well, I, you know, the thing about aging is we're going to get wrinkles or we have wrinkles. We're going to have age marks on our face, hands, body. And perhaps even if we keep very fit and eat right, our body doesn't work exactly like it used to when we were young. But we have knowledge that we didn't have before. So I'm saying this to anybody here who's quite young or older than we are. Um, there, yeah. It, it's, it's a ride. We're on a ride. It's a beautiful, wondrous, sometimes pretty horrible ride. And all aspects of it, all aspects of aging bring you things you have to learn how to deal with that make you a better, deeper, richer person and bring you a lot of, a lot of interesting, cool things that happen to you. Even something really horrible. It's a test of how you're going to handle it. So yeah. the price of wisdom, uh, unfortunately, is the years. And, and there's, crow's feet. <laughs> there's there's no way around it. You you cannot cram wisdom into your own body when you're 25. Right. You have to absorb it over time. And, like and everyone says, oh, if only I knew then what I know now, or I wish yeah. I had the brains I have now with the body I had when I was 20. Right. But it, it doesn't work like that. There are very few, very self-aware people who are young, very young. Um, but you do run across them. And within Flat Earth, there are some very young people who are very bright and very on the ball, who are very aware of what's going on. And they're they're true t truth seekers. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody like that when I was 20. I certainly was not like that. And so I think it's awesome. Yeah, agreed. All right. Well, That's it. That's our show. Happy birthday, Mark Sargent. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for everything. And thank you for everybody that said happy birthday in the comments and for all the people that called me last night and told me the same thing. It is much oh. appreciated. And and we need to have a secret phrase or word that if you come back to this video and you've made it this far, that you can put as a comment in the video um, once it goes from Google where it is live now to YouTube. So if you're listening to this live, you can write anything you want, but put 50th birthday. Happy 50th birthday, Mark. Uh, you don't have to be that long. 50th birthday is fine. Any variation of yeah, that Yeah, 50th fine. birthday is good. You can leave my name out of it. Yeah. All right. Sure. All right, to everyone here, thank you so much for being here. I said that before. I'll say it again. And until we meet again, and we shall keep it flat. Long live Flat Earth. Hail Hydra. Long, long live Mark Sargent. George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs>